and everybody. I will call this meeting of the school committee, a regularly scheduled meeting to order um, on December 7th, 2021 at 6.08 p.m. And tonight's agenda includes communications from the school committee and the administration and the student representatives report, public comment, reports and discussion items, including a parent square overview and the superintendent evaluation process and goals. Uh, our action items are many and include consideration of, of approval of the superintendent's goals, consideration of approval of updates to Title IX policy, consideration of acceptance of picnic tables from Etabola, and consideration of appointment to the finance subcommittee, and consideration of approval of the FY23 budget development process, and consideration of approval of minutes from October 26, 2021, and November 9, 2021. And we will then conclude with a chair report, superintendent report, future agenda items, and next meetings, and an executive session followed by adjournment. So, we will begin with our communications or announcements from the school committee and the administration. Um, let me just see. So first off, I will just start with some of the subcommittee updates. We have had a policy subcommittee meeting on November 22nd. And the PISC co-chairs, Stacy Prinzi and Nora Walker joined us at that meeting. And we discussed how communications are rolled out in the parent associations across town. They are, return they are reviewing those communications with their parent associations and will return to the policy subcommittee with some guidelines about how they, about the communications. We also reviewed the MASC fiscal budget policy updates, um, and these will be reviewed over the course of the year more thoroughly with a report out in the spring of 2022. And we also reviewed new DESE vocational, vocational and technologi technological school admissions. Um, we saw no need to update our policy manual as we do not have this in our policy as it's not treated in our policy manual. Um, we also had a curriculum subcommittee meeting from just yesterday, and I'll let Ms. Bergstrom update on that. Sure. Um, we were happy to welcome our, uh, our elementary science director and our 612 um, science director, and um, they shared with us the updates that have been um, ongoing regarding the DESE standards around science and how those are being implemented in the classroom. They shared some um, photos with us and some videos that are being used with um, students in the classroom and of student work. Um, they talked about the next steps that will be happening in terms of uh, the science curriculum standards and how they will be looking um, at PBAs and um, across the district, at all grade levels across the district for elementary school, they will have um, two PBAs in the next year and attempt three. Is that correct, Jen? Yep, got that. Um, and um, then we uh, talked a little bit about some future planning for January for the curriculum subcommittee. Um, we have not yet addressed mathematics in a while, so we will be hearing from the district leaders in mathematics. And we will also be looking at um, student data and as it aligns with um, some of the plans that Dr. Hackett will be sharing around his goals and um, how that will be implemented throughout the district. So those will be the next two topics the curriculum subcommittee will be taking up. Great, thank you. Um, from, we also received uh, on November 23rd, a memo from the MIAA about masking and all indoor sports. And the memo in sum said that student athletes, coaches, and officials that are indoors shall be masked and basically said that there would be a continuation of the fall masking policy. Um, and from school committee, we just continue to ask any adults who are in our buildings for games or practice or spectators, please mask up. Um, 
besides that, in the community, um, we have a flu shot or flu mist clinic or appointments available through the town, which will be tomorrow. And these are by appointment. And other options are via CVS, Walgreens, um, your, pharm your local pharmacies. We also continue to have COVID testing at the town hall. This is continuing weekly through the holidays. The next clinic will also be tomorrow and is running from 3.30 to 5.30. And we have weekly safety checks that have started at the high school. These started after Thanksgiving. It's a take home PCR nasal swab test, as I understand. And we are now offering the, the safety checks at all of our district schools to help keep our kids and our staff safe. So I would just ask the community to please make use of those. Um, Dr. Hackett, do you have anything? I do not, on the communications though. Thank you. So next we'll move into our student report, our student council representatives report. All right, hi everyone. We <laughs> want to thank you all for having us here. And to start off, we want to give you guys a recap on the 2021 Spirit Fair. It was a huge success and it was very busy. The WHS cafeteria was filled with great energy and many clubs and teams were able to sell out of their merchandise. The Spirit Fair was also run alongside the Pediatric Flu Clinic and a canned soup and cracker drive. The canned goods were then donated to the Inca Pantry and we love seeing the town come together to support many combined efforts and organizations. The student council Wilson Farms pie sale was also a huge success. Many families purchased pies for their Thanksgiving dinners or the others donated their pies to the Inca pantry as well. The WHS Gives Back Club continued with their tradition of collecting donations to help local families. They are now switching to donating this money as gift cards and this benefits the families and needs while limiting the labor and contact in the process. This year, they provided gift cards for 145 Winchester children. The December play also took place this weekend and it was called the one act play that goes wrong. Huge crowds came to watch this very funny performance and the actors and actresses wore a clear mask on stage which helped keep their voices sound the same and audience members were also encouraged to wear a mask. The class of 2022 had their senior masquerade ball on November 19th. It was the first dance that the WHS has hosted in almost two years, and 150 students attended and they all had a blast. This upcoming Saturday is the junior snowball, and students are looking forward to the class of 2023's first in-person class event. All right, hi everybody. Um, as we've spoken about quite a bit, the Winchester versus Woburn Fenway game was right before break. The game was super intense and super close. I believe we lost by just barely in the last minute of the game. Uh, but despite the loss, the students seemed to have a blast. We're also really happy to see winter sports season starting back up. And there are a lot of big teams, including alpine ski, hockey, and basketball that will help keep, keep the school spirit high during these winter months. Uh, in school, the RAD seminar started for freshman girls and sophomore boys, but of course students are free to choose whatever program they feel comfortable in. Speaking of comfortability, we've actually had students noticing the new Parent Square software uh, using emails, and the response has been very positive. Moving on to student council news, as you all know, we had our pie sale last week, along with the Spirit Fair the weekend before, uh, which were both mass su massive successes for us and the Anka Pantry, which re received lots of donations. Instead of an in-person pep rally this year, the student council put together a video which had pictures as well as random student interview questions, uh, which were very funny to watch during our win blocks. Uh, and the sophomores ended up winning the hallway decoration contest after some debate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're very excited to have Miss Paradise attending our, um, our student council meeting tomorrow, and we'll make sure to update you on how that goes. And so now for the focus question of this report. Um, many students are enjoying this year and they're looking to what the next three quarters have in store for them. They are very excited going into this winter break season and stress rates seem to be low. Towards the end of the quarter, however, some students did notice that their work kind of piled up. This was mainly because of how their schedule was kind of worked out with that. 
And in regards to the pool testing at the WHS, there is currently minimal participation daily. This is likely because the vaccination rates are high and we've heard that over 90% of Winchester students have received their first dose and somewhere in the high 80 percentile of students are fully vaccinated, so this might factor into that. And as you all know, Hopkinton's High School did their two week no mask trial. We have yet to get a report on how this trial went, but we will let you know it as soon as we get more information. But we think that students would definitely be interested in doing this trial or some version of it as well. Uh, thank you very much. Please ask any questions. Thank you. I will open it up to the committee if anybody has any questions. Mr. Dixon. So thanks for coming. I just wanted to follow up. I don't expect you to have any information for us tonight. I thought the lessons learned questions that you asked your peers were fantastic. And when you brought that back to us, I think the end was pretty low. So I think you had a good collection of some student leadership, but I thought maybe there was an interest in kind of broadening that out. So do you have plans to kind of open up that survey? Is that something you'd be prepared to do. I just thought the questions and the feedback were really interesting and I'd love to know more about like what the broader student body thinks. Um, we could definitely look into having Wimblock teachers kind of like administer that because we've done surveys in the past and I feel like they've always gotten a good amount of people do it. So we could definitely look into doing that. Yeah, we have brought the idea up to student council um, and we're interested in starting a possible committee on that but also it's possible for just the two of us to put that out yeah. there yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well I think there's a real appreciation and hunger for that information here at the table I think you guys did a great job last time I just also want to ask do you have a sense of how well was the play attended I saw a huge number of cars outside the high school a lot, a lot of traffic it looked encouraging to me was it basically a success in terms of turnout do you think I think so I didn't attend it but I did <laughs> hear that it was like a ton of people were there yeah That's Mr. Great. Mahoney said it was about as packed as it could be while maintaining safe distance and I went to the play on Sunday for the closing show and it was it was really well attended the I got one of the last three parking spots and the auditorium was very full people were very carefully masked and I thought it was I thought it was really innovative to use the clear masks um, you could really see the expressions and the, uh, the effort was amazing so thank you guys Is there um is Miss Paradise visiting all the clubs this year? Is that why she's coming to see to visit? You said Miss Paradise would be attending. Is she just the uh, facilitator of student council, or is she taking time to spend time with each of the clubs this year? She's taking time to spend uh, time with us this meeting specifically. I haven't heard necessarily about her going to different clubs. I'm sure she would be interested in that. We could definitely bring it to her uh, at the meeting. Oh, but she is a very busy person right I now. was just curious. You had mentioned that she was attending, and I didn't know if there was a specific purpose that she was yeah. attending for. She seems to just be very involved in, like, helping students out wherever they can, and I, I think, like, this would help that, too. So That's awesome. Thank you. And you don't need to bring that back to her. No, you don't need <laughs> that. No, Because <laughs> I'll hear about it if you do. <laughs> so, okay. Any more questions for our student representatives? a quick question do you have do you have a contact at Hopkin, Hopkinton Hopkinton um I believe Mr. Mahoney is like knows the principal okay yeah he's been in a lot of contact with the principal I believe he's yeah. known them for a long time like lifelong okay. friends okay great okay thank you thank you really appreciate your thank you. Thank you. we could uh, clear a path for our <laughs> student representatives to Yay. exit <laughs> thank you thank you So now we'll move into public comment and public comment shall be for a period of 20 minutes and is not a discussion, a debate or a dialogue between individuals and the committee. It's a citizen's opportunity to express their opinion on issues on the agenda or of school committee business. Any individual wishing to speak before the committee shall identify themselves by name and address and shall speak for no longer than three minutes. All individuals shall speak to the full committee through the chair and shall not address individual members or administrators. So we offer in-person public comment and we have in-person public comment this evening. Um, we also offer remote public comment with registration 24 hours in advance. 
um, for our in-person um, public comment today. We just ask, please listen carefully to each other. Um, and I believe we have a few speakers who are going to be speaking to us this evening. And so we will start with you. Can I just ask a point of information? Did anyone register for remote public comment? We do have people registered I'm for sorry. remote public comment. We do yes, have people we do. who have registered. So sorry. do they, is there an understanding about when they can fall into the process? Would yes. you take them later or alternate just for We're, those who are waiting online? We are going expect? to start with the speakers from in-person public comment, and then we will move to so remote Karen, are we comment. splitting it up and we, time? Yes, and we are splitting it approximately 10 minutes and 10 minutes. Okay, Great. I will keep time for you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Suzanne Donovan. I am 151 Pleasant Street in Woburn, Mass. I've been the district-wide physical therapist in Winchester for the past 14 years. I'm here to present a petition that was sent out to the community uh, supporting accretion of the OTs and PT into Unit A. It currently has 381 signatures. We, the undersigned, are the unified voice of educators, parents, students, and concerned community members in Winchester. We respectfully ask the Winchester School Committee and its representatives to continue working with the WEA, OTs and PTs to reach a fair and dignified agreement. OTs and PTs uplift the quality of our schools and the daily lives of our children, especially those with the highest needs. Prompt action is needed to reach an equitable contract for some of the hardest working but underpaid education prof professionals in the greater Boston area. Our schools can't afford to continue undervaluing these essential members of our community. And I just wanna share one comment that was sent in by a parent we are better than this. As a parent of a special needs daughter that has been touched by these angels, I find it unimaginable that they would have to fight so hard to be treated equally and at least paid the market rate for their dedication. But this goes beyond children with special needs. Their expertise and dedication is a resource to teachers and parents whether support is needed long term or just to get through a particular challenge. In one way or another, their magic benefits us all. They are only asking for what is fair. Please, let's do the right thing. My name is Susan McCartney and I live at 4 Benjamin Kidder Lane in Bedford. I'm one of the occupational therapists in Unit F. I've been an OT for 42 years and for the past 28 years I've been in Winchester. I'm retiring on December 31st and I wanted to read you a comment that I got in an email from a parent that's typical of the many comments that I got. We are delighted that you are moving to a new stage of life after being an honored teacher for so long. We admit to a purely selfish bit of sadness that you won't be our son's teacher in the future. Our son loves his OT class so much and we truly respect and honor you for dedicating 42 years of your life to being a teacher. Parents donate money to WIFI and therapists receive teacher tribute postcards from WIFI. I have one that states, the school committee members are impressed with the high level of your professional endeavors. You are an extremely important member of the Winchester Public Schools community. I don't feel extremely important. For 28 years, I've been actively excluded. I have felt demeaned, humiliated, and insulted by the current negotiation process. I've never moved on a salary scale, and I currently earn what a 37-year-old teacher with a master's degree earns. I'm 65 years old with 42 years of experience and extensive education. Winchester takes great pride in being a town that values social justice, equality, inclusion, respect, and fair treatment. But when it really mattered, you did not extend those core values to the five devoted long-term therapy employees. You repeatedly singled out five women and denied us fair compensation rights, privileges, and protections. And when the Department of Labor Relations forced you to allow us to bargain, you set up an isolated Unit F in order to continue to marginalize us. Unit F is a separate and definitely not equal entity. You chose to spend your taxpayer dollars on legal fees for bad faith negotiation rather than using those funds to compensate a group of highly dedicated employees. Winchester compares itself to the 10 area towns. All but Wayland includes OTs and PTs in Unit A. This includes Andover as of November 14th. 
the recent school committee proposal caps therapy salaries $32,000 less than the unit A cap. This proposed cap is $12,000 less than our current salary. I don't think that it shows good faith bargaining to propose a $12,000 decrease in salary. 28 years of systematic oppression has cost me a lot emotionally and financially. It's just not right, plain and simple. Your proposal to Unit F ranges $27,000 to $46,000 less than our 10 comparable communities. Your students deserve highly educated and qualified therapists. How will you attract and retain good candidates for these jobs when other towns offer so much more? I'm concerned for the students that I'm leaving behind at Ambrose School. Thank you. I just want to make a current point of information to Susan and Suzanne or anybody else who speaks. If you have prepared remarks that weren't handed out to us, you could leave them with Ms. Kirby and they'll be attached to the minutes of the meeting. Could we email them to you? Um, that works. Absolutely. That is fine Just too. email them to the chair and the superintendent. That's fine too. Great. Thank you. And yep. we have five minutes. My name is Cindy Harrington and I'm a speech and language pathologist in the district. I'm speaking tonight in support of my occupational and physical therapy colleagues. There are five women total in this group. Five. These dedicated clinicians who between them have 118 years of service to the Winchester Public Schools have negotiated their contract in good faith for three years to no avail. They have been denied accretion into Unit A, the teacher's unit by Winchester, even though there are at least 188 other Massachusetts school districts with OTs and PTs in Unit A. As a member of Unit A myself, I want to publicly recognize that the OTs and PTs share the same job responsibilities as speech and language pathologists. We evaluate students, write reports, attend IEP meetings, write IEPs, conduct therapy services, collaborate with educators, consult with general education teachers and educational support personnel, plan and lead professional development, attend staff meetings, complete our own professional development, write progress reports, field questions from parents about our respective disciplines, and are wholeheartedly invested in the progress of our students. The bottom line is school-based OTs and PTs are teachers. In addition to teaching learners diagnosed with special education needs, they teach parents how to support their child's impaired fine motor, gross motor, visual motor, and sensory skill development at home. They teach classroom educators and ESPs how to differentiate and modify activities for students with special motor needs. They teach special education teachers and specialists how to adapt seating and instruction to account for impaired motor skills. The second issue tied to their contract negotiations is a very well-kept secret in Winchester. At four Winchester schools, the town believes it is saving money by using contracted services carried out by occupational therapy assistants. An OT assistant has a two-year associate's degree versus the master's degrees held by our licensed occupational therapist. The district's plan to save money comes at a cost, and the cost is ineffective therapeutic services conducted by assistants who lack knowledge, education, and experience. To the administrators, school committee members, and Winchester residents tuning into this meeting, Please ask yourself what you would choose for your own child, a licensed master level clinician or an assistant with a two year degree. Now keeping your answer in mind, think of the child with an autism spectrum disorder, cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, cortical vision impairment, complex medical needs, cognitive impairment, or a rare chromosomal mutation. These are the neediest students in our district and they deserve Winchester's best. They deserve licensed and registered OTs and PTs, not assistants. Administrators and members of the school committee, I implore you to do the right thing and give Carol Facey Holmes, Bernie Vatcher, Deb Bollier, Susan McCartney, and Suzanne Donovan a fair contract. Show them the respect they have earned, accrete them into Unit A, and abolish the use of contracted services. Bernadine Batcher, 18 Orchard Road, Bedford, Massachusetts. I've been in OT for 44 years. I've been in Winchester for 24 of them. Three years ago, administration told us we were employees at will. 
because it gives the district the flexibility in case they, they decide to go in another direction. There are five of us left, five dedicated, committed, highly trained masters and doctoral level educators. Susan retires this month from Ambrose. Contract negotiations and an outstanding labor charge against the district have preserved the Ambrose OT position from being contracted out for now. If the school committee's proposal, proposed contract goes through, the contractors and assistants could replace us all. Lisa Fleming built the department and dedicate the OT department and dedicated 32 years to this district in Lincoln School. She retired in July of 2020 and her full-time position at Lincoln shifted to a contracted OT assistant and redu was reduced to three days. That contractor left in June. And a new contractor covers Lincoln School, the middle school, the high school in three days. Lynch School has had three different part-time contracted OT assistants in five years. The community should be concerned about continuity, reduction in hours, and the shift of service from a registered OT to an assistant. We've heard through the grapevine and even administrators, quote, the contractors are here to stay. They're more cost effective. They're waiting for you to retire to replace you with contractors. I have a personal perspective on OT assistance. I was an OT assistant. I was well-intentioned, caring, but my associate's degree does not equate to my master's degree. I received little to no supervision. Licensure laws require an assistant to work under the license and supervision of a registered OT. By law, assistants cannot evaluate or progress students as they simply lack the clinical skills yet there are four of them in seven of our schools. We have loved our jobs and we have loved working with your children. So this, di this, this direction of dismantling a long-standing department by using contractors and assistants feels to us like the wrong direction. What is at stake here goes far beyond our fair contract. It's about the future and advocating and protecting the rights of some of the most vulnerable learners in this town. The people sitting in this room can correct this now. School committee is meeting tomorrow. Vote to accrete this group into Unit A and provide equity for this group and discontinue the practice of contractors versus employees. You have the power to choose the right direction. My name is Ann Pace. I live at Forest Silver Hill Road in Sudbury, Massachusetts, and I'm a fifth grade teacher at Ambrose. The OT um, and excuse me. Yeah. So we were just going to have we were going to ha uh, limit to four to four of the speakers. To Twelve minutes out in the hall with one of. We've got a minute then. Do you have a minute? Yeah. I'm sorry. Open meeting law allows you to speak at public comment. School committee has a policy on public comment so but that's what we can fault that's what they have to follow so sh it's up to the chair but we can give you the minute okay. the OT and PT teachers in Winchester are an integral part of the school community they provide much needed services to children with a wide variety of challenges they bring a wealth of knowledge and experience that allows them to differentiate service delivery to meet the needs of students like a classroom teacher, our OTs and PTs arrive early and stay late or work at home long after the school day ends to provide the highest level of care and service to our students with varying degrees of physical challenges. These professionals are highly valued members of our school communities on whom teachers rely for advice and strategies to support students with challenges who do not qualify for OT services. For all these reasons, our OTs and PTs should be negotiated with in good faith and offered a contract in Unit A along with Winchester teachers. As a classroom teacher, there have been many times that I have had concerns about a student's handwriting and have turned to the OT in our building, Susan McCartney, for advice. Despite her heavy caseload and very busy days, she has never failed to give me materials and tips I can implement to support my students. The OT and PT teachers in our buildings are as dedicated to their profession and desire to provide the best, most, most thoughtful services to students, just as the classroom teachers in the Winchester schools. The dedication of the staff is the reason our schools are top-notch. Our families expect nothing less. 
I have recently learned that four of our seven schools have contracted out work to an agency that provides OTs and OT assistance to our schools. The OT that evaluates the child delegates the service to an OT assistant who has only a two-year associate's degree. Contracted OT assistants do not have the connection to our community as we do. Our current OT and PT teachers are highly educated and trained, having attained master's degrees or doctorates in their field, and have gained experience in other clinical settings prior to joining the Winchester Public Schools. This knowledge and experience is extremely valuable and gives them the ability to evaluate each student on a day-to-day -day basis and differentiate to ensure effective student progress. Two of our veteran OTs are retiring this year. If we want to attract and retain qualified and dedicated OT and PT teachers, it's imperative that we treat them with the respect they deserve. They should join the rest of the WPS teachers in Unit A, which already includes all other special education staff. We have two. We have two. Okay. All right. So we have two members of the public coming for remote public comment and to give the, uh, to provide that opportunity for them to speak. We will move now to the remote public comment. First one's John Tappan. Okay. Mr. Tappan. Mr. Tappan, you are unmuted. And for our remote public comment, we ask, <coughs> um, same as with our in-person comment, public comment, that you turn on your camera and give your name and your address. Yes, my name is John Tappan. I live at 409 Main Street in Winchester. I'm the father of three boys, two of which are dyslexic. A year ago, in January, a group of concerned family members addressed this very board to discuss dyslexia and the programs that the uh, city and, excuse me, the school district had in place. To date, we have yet to hear from this school committee or from the superintendent on how they are planning to address the concerns that the families brought to your attention. Since that time, the curriculum at Winchester has received a failing grade from Ed Reports. And uh, over that course of that time, we've also asked for increased testing and awareness, as well as a review of the curriculum. Over 400 town residents have since signed a petition and submitted it to the superintendent, asking for formal comment in a public forum to address these needs. My ask to you is to please ensure that this gets on an agenda item and is addressed for the community and for our students so that we can make progress in this very important area. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Sarah Gannon. So I'm gonna promote you to panelists. Hi there, can you see me? Ken, hold on just a second and get you a little bigger here. I'm in my car. I just pulled over to park. So the <laughs> things we do for uh, kids and school committee stuff. <laughs> okay, you're we'll good. try. You're we'll try to make you bigger than a th talk, thumbnail. <laughs> okay, awesome. Hi, I'm Sarah Gannon from 10 Lloyd Street. Um, thanks so much for allowing me to comment tonight, Dr. Hackett. I'm encouraged by the news from yesterday's WinPAC meeting that data will be shared out um, very shortly regarding the, the Dibbles. I'm hopeful there will also be an analysis component as well as a live public comment and review from you. Data by itself is not very useful. It's the interpretation and use of the data that is important. Implementing the district-wide screener for K-2 is a critical step in terms of assessing foundational skills. So I applaud the district for stepping up and making this happen. One of your goals that you will discuss tonight relates to equity of access for all students. As I've mentioned for the past year, the current reading curriculum, units of study and reading, is not equitable as it's not appropriate to a substantial demographic of our students. Studies are showing 20% plus. The author of the program has even stated this publicly. There are many options and paths that the district can move to in order to make reading instruction inclusive and accessible for our students, and I hope it will do so. 
Finally, 400 people signed a letter with numerous asks of Dr. Hackett. I can appreciate that the district seems to be doing some work relating to those asks. However, given the goal areas relating to cultivating and supporting a culture of trust and collaboration, I continue to ask for the creation of a working group of stakeholders dedicated to literacy as a starting point to gain that trust and focus on collaboration going forward. Currently, there's a curriculum subcommittee made up of Dr. Hackett, two school committee members, and the assistant superintendent. The curriculum subcommittee is not the inclusive place we envision for literacy discussion to take place as we are missing critical voices, which include teachers, specialists, and parents, all who should speak on their own behalf and not be for. For the past year, many parents have asked repeatedly for literacy to be put on the agenda and for an open meeting and discussion to take place around early literacy topics that are intertwined with the goals you'll review this evening. From my perspective, the direct result of a lack of communication and a lack of trust occurred when parents came with experiences and their concerns were deflected and downplayed. Yet, we still wait for communication to be open to the public on this issue. It could be at the table of the school committee or a meeting scheduled by your office and open to the public. Your proposed goals focus on creating trust, marginalizing students' experiences, whether voiced by their parents or themselves, is not the answer and nor is the failure to respond. If admin and or the school committee believe that parents and students are missing pieces of information that they have, then provide that information in an open meeting for all to listen to and ask questions about. Create the dialogue. Your goals seem to support this request, so I'm asking you, Dr. Hackett, to get literacy on a public meeting agenda and notify families that it is there. Give the families the information they request, and if you're unable to provide it, then help provide information on what's reasonable. You can help rebuild the trust now. I look forward to future collaboration to support our students and literacy needs and to support the training um, and instructional literacy with our talented teachers and staff. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. And with that, I will close public comment at 6.45 p.m. And we will continue with our reports and discussion items agenda. And the first item on our reports and agenda is, thank you very much for our public commenters. Thank you. Um, our first item on our agenda is on Parent Square, which was introduced to the community on December 1st. And we will just be providing an overview and introduction of this. Ms. Bolognese, can you make sure the mic is pulled really close I to the I can't hear myself. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> so I'm not sure if the wind cam speaker is on to the external speaker should be picking up the mic a little bit because i'm not picking it up from yeah. public no, comment I'm not either sure people are hearing you. yeah mm -hmm. okay okay All right. so thank you everyone good evening everyone um it is um uh, with a little bit of fanfare that we uh, and actually an introduction by the student representatives it was good to hear some feedback from them uh on parent square uh, I'm not going to spend really much time on this at all, other than to say, uh, first of all, to thank um, all of you the, for the support, uh, to thank uh, Andrew Marin for uh, leading the implementation and, and other tech people, as well as our, um, getting our Aspen data clean enough to be able to roll it into this, this application. Parent Square was rolled out last week. This replaces um, School Messenger. From a, just from a for a little financial piece of information, the uh, school messenger contract actually ended in November. Uh, that was a ten thousand dollar a year expenditure. Parent Square uh, will cost us about thirteen thousand dollars this year, so um, it's relatively uh, co comparable to what we were spending before. But I think, uh, and I'm already hearing feedback from people that the um, that they do like the uh, application. Uh, you can see from this picture that there's an actual there's an app for uh, Android as well as um, uh, Apple that you can download. <coughs> the nice thing about uh, Parent Square is that you can set uh, preferences around translated languages or the language you you like to receive messages in. Um, it is uh, completely uh, compliant with um, ADA, um, and it also allows you to see all of your students' information in one place. So regardless of where you have a child in, in the school system, 
uh, when you log in and create your account, you actually, all, the all of your children are brought into this one application. So it's kind of one-stop shopping. Um, and um, I've already heard a lot of uh, positive feedback about that uh, because it does consolidate um, uh, information. It also can keep it out of your inbox if, uh, like me, uh, you get a lot of emails. Um, and so you can also determine how often you want to have the updates, you want to deliver it at the end of the day. So there are a lot of um, great features to this application. Uh, we did, again, just kind of rolled it out um, last week, and um, we are continuing to build it out. Uh, it will handle our emergency school communications as well. So if we have some snow in the forecast, which um, I'm hoping we get through to the December break without that, um, but it, we will also be um, handling any kind of emergency closures um, through par Parent Square as well. So it will be also provide text messages and we can send out voice messages as well. So um, again, we're excited to roll this out. We've been talking about it for a couple of months now. Uh, this is a really uh, important piece of our overall communication strategy, which I'll, I'll talk a lot about in uh, a little bit. So happy to try to answer any questions you might have. Do we have any questions from school committee? Mr. Nixon. So several, can you talk about more about the, um, in the future, enabling this platform for a classroom communication? So I'm assuming you're saying teachers to parents. How do you envision that? Is, is that just another tool that could be available to teachers? Is that actually intended to replace sort of direct emailing? If you're prepared to say so yet, yeah, what might we expect and what would be the timing of that? So um, being very sensitive to the fact that new stuff is not always awesome for people, especially in the middle of the school year, we've uh, been very careful about kind of a soft rollout with this. Um, right now, it pretty much resides at the district office, although we have many principals, Mr. Mahoney included, uh, at the high school who really wanted to get on board with this quickly. Um, there weren't a lot of principals who used School Messenger primarily for their communications. They generally use Aspen through email. It can do as much or as little as we want it to do. So from a rollout perspective, focus was on the district. Schools are, are off, main offices are picking it up now. Um, it will be available and can be available for teachers as a communication tool. Ideally, um, we would replace some of the apps that are being used over time. Um, remind and some of the other applications that, that teachers may be using to work with their kids because what this does also for us which is important is it keeps a public record of communications in case in fact we get audited uh, any communication as you know coming out of a school system regardless of who sends it is a public document um, it also provides um, really I think from my perspective um, protection for staff and teachers uh, coaches um, as opposed to having individual text messages or uh, mm -hmm. using Twitter, a little bit more public platform. So it, again, can do as much or as little as we want it to. We're just trying to be sensitive to, uh, to the rollout process and uh, starting here, going to the schools, and eventually we'll have, I'm sure, um, we'll start to gain some momentum with some teachers as well. And then, thank you. So that 13, I think you said $13,000, so it's a marginal, in, it's, I mean, it's an increase, but not a huge one uh, from a dollar point of view. Is, is that only to support kind of the skeletal way we're using it now or for that price per year? It's all we, of it. It's all inclusive, it's all basically. Inclusive. And is that, is this like a year-to-year -year contract? Is this a multi-year contract? It's a year-over-year year -year -year contract, but we can opt out in a year. Okay. Um, and my, so my last question is, um, are you familiar with, or how new is this as, as, as a tool? Are there other districts you're familiar with that are using it? Or there do we have some peer districts we can be learning from? There are no districts that I'm aware of around us. Um, we did, uh, I did uh, happen to use this in Braintree as well. Um, so we had some good What does the former Braintree there. superintendent um, think of it? Have you talked to him? He thought it was spectacular. <laughs> um, <laughs> He also okay. wanted me to tell you, you, you know, you're really lucky to have him here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, he thought it was, you know, it was great for us in Braintree. And, and it did pick up because it's so, it's really pretty simple to use. Mm -hmm. um, and the quality of the messages and, and what you can do with it, uh, people just kind of start to kind of gravitate and, and, and come along. So Andrew's doing a lot of training. Uh, we have training dates set up next, I think, um, in January, Jen, maybe, for administrative assistance. And, but there's a kind of an overall training rollout schedule. During the PD days, they have Munis and Parent Square for the admin assistance. So but for most school committee members, no news is good news. I've not heard any static about this at all. Um, just I've heard from athletes and um, 
some of the student leaders at clubs at the high school anxious to know if they would be able to use it moving forward for club communications and things like that as well. Um, they kind of like the format. The kids, the kids are also getting the emails and um, I've heard some of them just for them seeing the text, seeing it all streamlined, the fact that it comes in a way that is um, visible to them um, they have actually noticed a that's difference and have remarked on it. As oh, that's well. great to hear. So, yeah, yeah. So it's always interesting to me when there's a buzz about it among high school students because this isn't something you'd expect them to be excited about, but um, apparently they are. That's um, great. That's great. Really that's interested great. in that. So that's great. Um, there is some functionality for two-way communication as well. So um, there's a feature where uh, it, it, when we when something gets posted, you can actually ap appreciate it as a receiver. Uh, in the application. We have not turned on this, uh, this function yet, but we could also have uh, two-way communication. So a parent might say, let's say Mr. Mahoney post um, his update. A parent has a question about something on the update. The parent can respond to or message Mr. Mahoney. Nobody else can see it. It's just between the two of them. He can clarify the, that answer for, we're not there yet. Um, and I don't want to speak for the administrators and principals yet, but um, I, think, I think it is a good function. I used it some in Braintree as well, just because it was um, kind of an immediate answer to questions, because you know what it's like when we send out communications. Often it just leads to a lot of questions and it's, it's nice to be able to have that kind of feedback and also then be able to even send out another one just to clarify we've received these five questions and just want to provide answers to that so um, it, that has that functionality as well that's great mr hopcroft i would just chime in that um you know communications is hard in any organization and certainly in a complex distributed organization like a school system um, i i think that uh, I just want to really applaud your efforts to, to unify and simplify um, the, the platform and create a platform that it sounds like is extendable to many other um, you know, groups in our community. You know, I, I think it's just hard. You know, we're all hit with so much stuff from so many places, from, from work, from social, from all, all over the place. And then you have kids in multiple schools and multiple things. It's just keeping track of what's important. And, and um, you know, I, I think you know, you've taken a great step here. And, in really helping you know, modernize our, our communications and simplify it and and most importantly help get our messages you know back and forth and, and do the underlying communication so i just want to say you know good job thank, thank you. you thank you other mr brady i'm also excited about the possibilities of having this new tool in place i'm curious is this something that community members and future parents would be able to sign up for if they want to get information from the schools? It's a great question. Not, um, that came up before and I'm not quite sure I know the answer exactly to it. Um, it's based on the information that's in Aspen, Student Information System, so it pulls from Aspen and updates on a daily basis. Um, so right now as it stands you would have to be in Aspen to be able to do that, but I believe there might be an opt-in uh, option for non-school kind of related personnel or for uh, accounts um, or parents, um, but I'm not quite sure. I, I don't really know for sure. Um, if, if possible, that would be a nice feature. We, we've talked a little bit about like, for example, WinPAC, uh, groups like that, that um, could, we, what we could do is they could access it, they could use it, they can have their own platform, we can do all kinds of controls, whatever we want them to be able to do or not be able to do, and then they can get people to actively, they would have to actively sign on. So they can put out a blast and, and then people can come to them and we can help facilitate that too. So, but it'll be yeah. separate for them. I just think it would be great for, you know, community members who want to sign up and find out more about what's going on in the schools. They can get the town alerts. And so it would right. be nice if we're able to offer that at least just to get the That's alerts. That's a great suggestion. The one thing I will add on Dr. Hackett is that um, the, one of the neat features that I noticed about it um, for parents is that if you have an out of district, district special education student that you are getting the emails and it's a way for those parents to feel more connected right. um, back to the schools and I think anything we can always do to remember that students who are placed out of district are still our students Absolutely. as well and that um, keeping them in the loop of that kind of communication um, is an awesome function of it that I think is probably underrated and underappreciated except by those that it applies to. So That's a great point. Um, 
I do appreciate that. I was curious about the PD, but it sounds like it's going to roll out starting in January for, and is that from the company or is that something that's we're able us. to do in That's from internally? us. We're doing it internally. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. great. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I would just say that just playing around with it a little bit, looking at it from receiving the communications recently, it's been very intuitive. And I think as Mr. Hopcroft was saying, it's great to have all of your students, your children, um, consolidated into one messaging platform, into one platform. Um, and just the different functions that you can see as you scroll through the menus and look across the page. Uh, I think it's very impressive. So I like the unification and I like the, how it's simple. I hope it will simplify things. And I was excited to see the PFA daily announcements come out on <laughs> Parent Square. So thank you. Absolutely, thank you. So we'll keep getting better with it um, and uh, we appreciate your feedback as always. Okay, so we have another agenda item, which is uh, the superintendent evaluation process and goals. Um, we have been discussing this over a series of meetings and Dr. Hackett has been refining his goals and adding action items. So, Dr. Hackett. Thank you again. Uh, so I intend this evening to provide you with an update from what you saw last time. Um, with more build out of the goals. I do want to just say um, from the start that uh, I see this as a working document. I think this should be a live document uh, for us always that, um, you know, uh, it, it, there is always a tendency to have goals set up. People kind of forget what they are. It's hard to get back to. Um, one of the things I really thought through with um, putting these together was that I also didn't want to get too detailed into specific action steps to support the objective because things change, right? So there are some clear action steps for some of these objectives, but there are potentially action steps that are going to happen as a result of going through and doing the work. And I think that allowing that kind of fluidity through, uh, through the process is important because uh, it keeps us from getting kind of lockstep um, stuck. Um, uh, in a certain place. So while I see the goals is, is you know, there, permanent, solid, hopefully, uh, the objectives I think are, uh, may change from one year to next year some, uh, but, you know, the action steps should allow the kind of flexibility to allow us to be agile as we work through things as an organization. So one of the things just um, in support of that I just want to show you is that this, um, we're setting up a dashboard for these goals. This will be public facing um, and we will uh, not yet decide it on the level, um, but what you will see, you'll be able to see here is just the overview, the key elements that, that were included in my goals the last time you saw them. Um, and then you can see the district goals. Um, there's a, st a status indicator for uh, each of the goals um, and the key being not started in progress, delayed and completed. <coughs> um, and additionally, what we, we want to do is roll up completed objectives and action steps for the last 30 days, as well as provide a, a, a future view of uh, in progress action steps that are uh, due within the next 30 days so that people can both kind of see the overall health of the goal and what kind of progress we're making, but at a level of detail also uh, to give people a sense of movement. I think that um, what, some of the feedback I've heard, we heard some of the feedback I think tonight in the, in the uh, public comment is just kind of a, what is happening? How do we know it's happening? What is next? Um, I, I think this is a, a good opportunity for us to be able to provide that. And um, so I would look forward to your feedback on that, not, not necessarily tonight. Um, the hope would be that we could um, push this out and go live with it sometime uh, next week. Um, and then, um, you know, we can keep, again, keep trying to adapt and adjust as, as people um, give us some feedback on it. Just so you can also see the, kind of the back end of this, <coughs> um, it's obviously more of a, it's a project management uh, tool. So this just happens to be goal three, and you can see the objectives are built out, <coughs> and then you can see action steps are built out as well. Um, this also allows for the inclusion of um, sub tasks. So if some of these action uh, 
steps turn into something more of a little mini project on themselves, the capability is there to add those additional um, steps. So it's pretty powerful. Um, I, th I think it's, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to using it. I've, I've used other things like this, but not anything uh, quite this thorough, as well as also I've never done the public facing, which I'm kind of excited about. I think it's, um, it's a good opportunity for us to, as part of our communication to the public. So, um, so having said that, I'm not going to take you through what you've already been through. You've really kind of uh, don't need to read all this to you. They, you have it in your slide uh, PowerPoint presentation. I am going to focus a little bit more on, the, on goal four, which I see is um, really kind of where more of the immediate action is um, related to the work that we've been doing and, um, uh, and kind of what we see over the next several months as we unbelievably round the corner not too far from now into the new year. So the goal of uh, goal one, develop an understanding of values, hopes, and culture of the Winchester School community through building relationships and strengthening family and community engagement. You've seen that before. Um, stakeholder meetings was one objective. Um, a lot of these have happened and continue to happen. I had a great meeting uh, yesterday with, uh, with WinPAC. Um, I have met with PISC, likely going to meet with PISC. I think their meeting is next week again. Um, but I've had a lot of opportunity to interface with town administrators, um, uh, the police department, um, and others. So I have all kinds of information about from them and, and a sense for what, um, what, what they value within the community. The work that we're doing together, which is, is actually the best way for me to get to know people, is actually do the work. Um, I'm not going to provide you my, my calendar of every single meeting I ever attended with agendas as evidence. I just don't think it's useful. I trust that you know that I'm busy. Um, and I trust that you um, know people who know that I'm busy. And, um, and many of you are part of the meetings that I, I'm attending uh, all the time anyway. I just I don't want to get down into uh, having this become more of a checklist. I want it to be meaningful um, and just kind of really try to give you the steps that, um, that I think are important in a little bit bigger uh, context. Second objective, I, want, I, will, I will identify common themes <coughs> and um, kind of do a, a, kind of a report out on that uh, as, as we continue to move along. Uh, and then I also want to use that information to work internally with, um, with principals, administrators, and leaders to, uh, it's an opportunity for them to kind of hear from others through me what people value, uh, what people um, are hoping um, for us as a school system. So goal two, synthesize and evaluate the data through goal one. Um, and uh, again, thank you for helping me back off this a little bit. Um, I really am much more appreciative even now than I was when you said it the first time. But um, this again is that idea of, of setting up kind of a plan to plan for our next strategic plan, whatever iteration that looks like. So this I would see as being helpful as we get into through the year into June as, as we, from a leadership perspective, start thinking about the summer work and what we want to do and, and how we want to approach um, the beacons um, and kind of more longer term planning. Uh, so again, thank you for getting me down off of having a completed plan by the end of June. I do appreciate that. Um, I'm my own worst enemy at times. Um, goal three, through a distributed model of leadership, develop recommendations and Im implementation plans for improvements in organizational systems for key district performance areas. So I've kind of broken this out <coughs> um, a little bit more than the last time you saw it. Um, starting with a communications plan, I had a good internal meeting with uh, Andrew and Mr. Hopcroft uh, the other day just to kind of start to have the discussion of building out a framework. This is more of an internal document than external, but, um, and you can see we've highlighted education because we're still plan playing around with those three terms. Um, I had a great suggestion from WinPAC that inclusion and then maybe in, um, um, empowerment innovation, but, uh, which is a great suggestion. Um, just trying to make sure that they're all in the same tense because um, that would drive me crazy. Um, so just quickly to go through to give you an idea of our conversation, again, this was um, internal. From how do we think about our communications, define uh, our why, what are our goals, who's our audience, uh, building out our brand identity, which you can see with the W um, in uh, the circle. We, you know, we like it, it's, we think it's clean. 
Um, it, it is recognizable. It separates us from the town uh, because we were just using the seal before, which is great, but it, it gives us, I think, a little bit more of our own identity. Um, audience, who's communicating? So this is a this is a great kind of chart as we you know map out the use of Parent Square. Who's going to who's going to use it? How do we see them using it? Um, and how do we make sure that everything stays uh, really kind of current? Um, you know, putting too much on everybody or giving everyone the capability of doing it sometimes also creates the opposite problem of it just starts to get stale or someone moves or someone stops using it. So we really need to be thoughtful about, um, you know, what are those communications that we roll up? We really, we've already met with uh, WinCam. Um, thank you. Um, we are looking forward to, and they are very interested in partnering with us to create content. We'd love to be able to do some spotlight videos on different teachers, on different kids, on different programs, on different schools, um, really take advantage of the, of the resource, tremendous resource that they are uh, as part of our over, overall communication portfolio, which we then could push out through Parent Square, bring people, the, really the idea from, from our perspective is that Parent Square is the push out and we will invite you into our website occasionally with that push out with documents that may reside on the website. Uh, the website coming really acting more as a, a, um, a resource platform, an archive uh, where you go to get, you know, registration documents or where you go to get policy or where you go to um, those kinds of things. So that's really the idea um, in adding on WinCam and, and trying to get into some video production, I think would be a great addition. And then we just kind of talked about when are we going to communicate. We want to be consistent. We want to be regular. Uh, people can, should be able to count on when they're going to receive communications from us. Um, yeah, and then, I, again, I won't, um, I won't read down through this with you, but we have worked on our branding a little bit. Um, we've messed around, messed around with some district colors um, as we think about the website because the next step for us will be to update our website. Um, we're hoping to be able to... Uh, potentially roll out a new website um, in January, February or so. Uh, right now, uh, apologies for some, um, if you find dead links, let us know. But there are some older documents. We're doing the best we can just to kind of go through and clean that up as, as best we can for those of you who have, um, who really have uh, nothing else to do uh, and want to kind of go through our, the website and just check links and check documents. That would be helpful for us, honestly, so that we can uh, do the best we can to clean it up, especially as we transition to a uh, different platform. And then we've been talking, we've been working on the, just the different fonts. What kind of fonts are we going to use? When are we going to use them? So that we are consistent and people recognize um, us a few different iterations of the W. And then a few different looks at um, letterhead and uh, that kind of thing. So thanks again to uh, Andrew, just a tremendous amount of work, and uh, he loves to do it, and uh, he's, he's great at it. I, I enjoy um, our time working together on this kind of stuff because it, it really, I think, does make a difference, and um, we'll continue to, to, to work on that. So this overall goal, again, I'm not going to read down through, but you can kind of see the emphasis on the communication plan and then just overall um, kind of business operations. Uh, I think that <clears throat> a lot has been done. I think we have a great opportunity now uh, to actually, uh, Munis is in a new um, version or an updated version of Munis, um, which is great. I think that will be relatively easy for us to to on board and Peter may feel differently, but I think the biggest thing that, um, you know, Peter brings to the position along with uh, Andrew and working kind of hand in hand is just trying to also get business processes that are efficient and clean and clear within the office, really trying to get away from paper. Um, there's, has been really, I think a lot of copies and, and digitizing, you know, digitizing that process, I think for everybody, I think the town would appreciate that. Uh, Peter's been working closely also with town um, finance department on um, just trying to make sure that we are following what they need for procurement, but also providing some feedback and hopefully being a voice in that process because that can get um, a little complicated and, and can really kind of slow some things down. Complete the build out of, of um, talent ed, which um, uh, Lori's office has, has, uh, has implemented in using. Um, 
it, it um, we we know that the next step for us is just to kind of continue to push that out and um, use it a little, a little bit more robustly than we have been. Uh, we are exploring an online registration process system for next year uh, that would allow parents to register their students online. For those students already registered, it will allow them to go online and change any phone numbers or addresses or any, uh, anything in their information that might change and roll over, the, over automatically. Of course, we would have a backup um, in paper, um, you know, person support uh, uh, in place as well. But um, we think that this will uh, take a lot off of the central office um, in terms of the central registration process. Uh, and along the line of that too, we are exploring um, the implementation of, a, of transportation bus routing software, um, but not crazy money routing software, like um, something that is manageable and um, appropriate for the size that of, of transportation system that we have here in Winchester, uh, but also potentially even allowing uh, the ability for us to kind of know where the buses are. Uh, and maybe even I ideally allowing parents to know where they are so that if they're running behind, they can see where the bus is and they don't panic, which again cuts down on the traffic and the, and the um, uh, phone calls to the central office. So our goal is just to really continue to try to uh, be more user friendly as a central office, uh, to be a resource both to, to uh, parents and, and to staff. Uh, we should, uh, like a good waiter or waitress, uh, be invisible um, for the most part. Uh, you should be able to do most of what you need to do without, without contacting us. Um, so, um, because when you contact us, we'd, we'd like to have the time to have the conversations about other things that are more important than, you know, what bus, um, what bus number I'm going to be on. So, so that uh, is potentially, uh, um, that could be potentially for fall rollout for next year as well. So that's pretty ambitious, uh, and so I'm not, we certainly can't make uh, any guaranteed promises, but I, I think it is reasonable that we can uh, do some form or some version of, of, um, of those last two, two items. So if anyone has any questions on, then quickly also. I'll throw out one. Sure. Um, can you go back one slide? I can do. Mm. So, um, Effective and efficient operations, you know, there's a lot of that's about communication, but when I see the registration piece, I just want to volunteer that many years ago, this was probably 10, 11, 12 years ago, we transitioned to an online payment portal, which has never provided all of the flexibility that it was represented to the community it, it would provide. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about ability to pay not just by credit card, but direct payment out of a checking account and other payment methods and so forth. And there were some fees that uh, showed up not long after the school committee approved that, that I'm not sure was really fully represented. And this is long before companies like Square existed or so many others, you know, Venmo, et cetera, et cetera. It, do you have any space on your table to even consider, you know, how we engage financially with families? Is there an oper Is there any value in just reassessing kind of what we do today? And if there are other options that are maybe easier or less costly for families, I am totally ignorant of how that looks on our back end at the district when a parent registers for music lessons or a bus or what have you on the website. I don't appreciate have any appreciation for how much work it you know generates on our end. I've long just wondered if there isn't a more efficient convenient, maybe cost-effective tool? What I do know, and I'll let Peter fill in, a, but what I do know, or I believe I know, um, is that whatever we do has to be approved by the town. So it has to fit into the town's system because any payments that come into us ultimately go to the town. Is that a true statement or? Absolutely a true statement. And, and given some of the municipal regulations around some of this, can be tricky. I know I had a conversation actually with the headmaster around the question of whether a program like you know Venmo, where parents could actually make a payment to us, I mean, they make payments to us online and they get charged three percent, which mm -hmm. is where we get a lot of pushback. Mm -hmm. um, you know, could we use some other strategy? So that, you know, we've begun that conversation. So, but in terms of existing systems that school system use that seem to comply statewide I'm not familiar with a really great one but we should have that conversation yeah. well I would just offer for the committee's benefit the system that we use today prior to that 
there was no system. Right. So you had to get in your car and drive to central office and hand over a check. But we're so in the same position. It's been a long, it's been a while. <laughs> um, and it does some things well, but there were also some things that I believe were represented to the committee that never really kind of panned out. A little bit um, of vaporware. Hmm? A little bit of vaporware, perhaps. Yeah, some, yeah. I mean, the company's pushing into the space hard, um, and you know they also have to abide by all the. Sure. So, um, so but, we you can, know, the it, customer is key too. So I, I can't help but wonder if there is aren't maybe there are other options. Is there a competition that still meets all the municipal finance requirements and so forth? I'm, and, it, and it, again, I'm ignorant of what work gets generated on our end or over at town hall when these payments come in. It might be something to look into. Well, we we will, and because we're motivated to do it for all kinds of other reasons as well. So um, we've had some experience, uh, Andrew, as well um, in this. Certainly Peter has. Um, I think that one of the things, for example, that we did in, um, was we provided a dis a discount in the transportation pass when you ha had when you used the system because it was a fee that corresponded with it, and we gave basically back the fee purchase, um, hmm. that kind of thing. But we um, we want to work. We definitely want to make sure that we can make this as easy for parents as we can. So, hmm. thank you, Mr. Brady. Just in terms of the talent ed, is that taking over? or has it already taken over how prospective employees would apply to the district? Are they applying through Talent Ed now versus they previously, I believe, applied through School Spring? So Talent Ed bought School Spring, I believe, or they're okay. connected. So Laura, do you want to talk to speak to what we have been doing? Because there's been quite a bit of a rollout already with Talent Ed. Right, so we use, they have different modules. So we're using, um, we're starting to build our electronic database <laughs> rather than having all those files uh, full of paper. Um, and it goes through school spring, but there is an additional step, and um, that that's what we're working on. So they don't really talk to each other well. School spring advertises, but then you go to Talent Ed to really complete the application process. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Last two objectives for goal three: uh, school security. Um, we have already had a couple of meetings with town officials. Uh, met with a, a couple of represent representatives of the police department um, this week actually um, to talk about kind of what we're noticing um, what we're hearing gathering feedback from uh, people who are you know frontline our, our admin assistants who are the ones who are the gatekeepers to the front door um, we have found a few things along the way that we've been able to fix and replace for relatively short money um, we are adding a couple additional, additional cameras and locations, for example, at Lincoln, um, where there's no coverage in the back of the building, you know, those kinds of things just to at least get good coverage for the high traffic areas that we would want to, um, for all kinds of reasons, be able to, to uh, have eyes on. And I say that also pretty loosely because, you know, the learning from this for me over the years has been we don't have security staff on call watching television monitors in a room somewhere in, in you know, here at Parkhurst. I mean, so cameras are m much more about <clears throat> our ability to figure out what happened, um, more importantly on the front end, to have our, some visual control of our, our main access points within our buildings. So that's really the best function for them. Um, you know, the MSBA uh, will, you know, when we go through their process with Lynch, um, they are pretty high on making sure that you've had a security consultant on board, which we would have and the, um, the, the, the project design team would have. And they will be, they will be paying attention to cameras. They, you know, so we, that's the conversation that we'll be having with the MSBA. Um, but we also want to temper that with the fact that I don't think we're a community that we want to have eyes on kids all the time period because the reality again is that it's we don't have the staffing nobody has the staffing to have that kind of security control over what's happening all the time what we need to make sure is we control our access points and have good line of vision on that uh, when that administrative assistant buzzes somebody in they ought to know or recognize who they are um, and they're the best um, source of information in terms of what, what what's a day in life look like mm -hmm. and what do you need um, so We've, again, already started to do some of that kind of more informal assessment, 
But um, as you know, there were some um, security reviews of town buildings done not too long ago. Um, and we are talking to um, the police department and, and also to uh, the uh, town, uh, both Ms. Rudolph and um, Mr. Tugut about kind of what are the next steps for some of those items that, that make sense for us. I mean, you can spend, as you know, as much money and get as much capability and security now as you can even imagine. And um, it, it, it's, but it's not helpful if it's not being used and if it doesn't have a purpose. So like everything else that we're trying to do, what's the, what's the purpose, why do we need it, and, and how do we be thoughtful about implementation? So that has begun as a conversation I wanted to put on here as much to keep you kind of aware of it, but this is a relatively kind of new development over the last few weeks uh, for us internally anyway. Can and I just I, ask, can I ask one sure. question? Just in this, we've talked about this publicly before here and as well as at Capitol. So my understanding is that starting maybe a couple of years ago, it took a long time to get this to happen, but working with the now current police chief, that PD actually does have the ability to access our school cameras um, remotely from their cruisers, at least at, um, at a couple of our schools. And only is certain the, cameras. What's that? Only certain cameras. Only, yeah, but not all of our schools. So this right. is that's a hardware issue we continue to work through. So I'm assuming that that is still the case. To your point, we don't have somebody who's paid full time to just monitor cameras all the time. But if, if, like in the event of an emergency or some event at a school, PD, I understand, can access some of those feeds. Is that your yeah, understanding? that's my understanding. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. What, what's the, um, when you talk about security, I mean, there's a lot of you know, physical security and, and, and threats, and, and I'm very interested with the you know, design, you know, new buildings coming online, you know, that we'll, we'll do a lot there. Um, and, and, and I'll probably have some comments generally about goals at the end, but, but one of the things I, I particularly like is that we're modernizing a lot of the technology that we're using. Um, I'm assuming that in many cases, um, in most cases, it sounds like you're going to um, third parties that are, you know, application service providers that are that are hosting this data for you. Um, and so I assume when it comes to sort of the digital security side of this, that we're relying on them and that they have backup in multiple locations and, and whatnot. Is, is, I guess is digital security part of the security it, review? It's a, a huge part of it. Um, the, the challenge we have, and it's not unusual for school systems uh, anywhere, is that we have a relatively brand new high school. We're gonna have a brand new Lynch Elementary. You know, things have changed. The biggest part of, of this, um, of the management of it is being you know, in a common management software package so that your camera systems are all in one management tool your access control points and your key cards are all controlled through one management uh, system um, I'm not sure we can get there with what we have in place right now but we'd like to get to two um, so that we can uh, be more efficient and manage it be more cost-effective with it there's a lot of options uh, now um, out there in terms of just cameras for example um, everything from you know, having an, a, an agreement with a company or contract with a company that will, they will replace the cameras on an ongoing basis. They house it. It's, you know, they, they take care of it, um, which is kind of nice and that you don't have to constantly be the one troubleshooting and trying to buy new equipment. Um, so there's just, a, there, as you can imagine, there's just so much uh, in that space in terms of product. Um, you know, our goal is to, again, be thoughtful, make it simple, uh, make it make it useful. Um, you know, it's gonna take some time and some investment. Uh, and those conversations are in cooperation in conjunction with the town, because ideally we would have the same key access card control system. Ideally we would have the same cam camera management system so that, you know, we're all talking to each other and we have good uh, duplication in, uh, in terms of backup. So, um, you know, that's, that is a goal. Can I just follow up and just say, so I, I definitely appreciate and I'm very interested in the, all of those are, um, strike me as aspects of physical security, um, but also your data security, I yeah. guess, in terms yes. of student yeah. records yeah. and all that. You know, it's, it's with a, a bunch of third parties, and so presumably it's just looking at the service agreements. With we, yep, it, yes, short answer. And we, um, we require, we have certain requirements when we make uh, commitments to any vendor. Uh, Jen certainly can talk to that some too. <laughs> um, I think, you know, we try to limit the number, different number of vendors we have uh, for that purpose. Um, and there's also, 
we are looking at some, I say Andrew and the tech team are, are looking at some possibility as a, a way to have our data go to a, a company that then kind of cleans it, encrypts it, and, and sends out to other providers that we're using, which would be another layer of security um, that I think would be helpful because student data privacy is, is huge. Um, and, you know, it's, um, you, you, we want to be doing the best that we can with it. And I think we are, I think, but, you know, like everything else, you can just always get better. I have Ms. Bergstrom. Um, I just want to go back to for a minute before we get off of this. I really appreciate all the conversation around technology and cameras and sort of eyes on the ground that way, but I don't want to lose um, the part in this conversation and as we move forward with this of the human part of this because sometimes it's not the technology that protects us, but the protocols we have in place in right. school buildings and the consistency right. of the people enforcing those protocols to everybody be on the same page and doing it the same way. Right. And understanding that just because I know Frank, I'm not gonna let Frank in the building if the policy is to see an ID before you come in. Right. It doesn't matter if we know that parent or not, that we follow that the same for everyone who walks in our building. So I want to make sure that as we as we roll out sort of the um, part of the security review, and sometimes the the tech is shiny and it can do a lot of things. And like you said, it um, there it could be endless in terms of technology. But I really think there's a lot of value in the human parts of this and the um, training that we do with our staff and our educators to. Um, really sort of be our eyes on the ground and make sure that we're following the same protocols. And, and it, it's a great point and is the point. I mean, it it's really starts with the protocols and procedures and then you <laughs> figure those out first and the training and then you figure out what you need for technology to support what you have in place. Um, so, uh, you know, I completely agree. And, and that's, you know, we know that um, that's, when things break down, generally it's it's in that, and it's it's a challenge for us because I think you know we I don't think we are our schools have always been open. Um, I've, I hear often I've heard quite a bit of feedback. I get emails uh, occasionally from parents about when are we going to be able to go in and you know COVID related when are we going to be able to go in and volunteer in the way that we used to volunteer. Um, we've heard some feedback about Lynch about we want to be able to you know have that kind of access and you know so it's that balance between wanting to make sure our buildings are welcoming to our parents and our community and also yet making sure that we have control over um, who's in who's out when in, when out um, you know going as far as having to present an id you know some communities do that some communities don't do that so the, the just the key is really knowing who's in the building you know whatever system that could be paper and pencil right. whatever system you need to do that and then making sure that you we know when they leave um and we have some work to do on that candidly um you know i think you know we talked about this a little bit with the high school and the open campus um you know we do not have um a, it, it is a it's a challenge for us to really be able to monitor in and out of students when you're letting that many kids out into the community um and we don't have a great solution for that right now so that is one of the things that we have been and will continue to talk about is there a tech solution to that um, which would be very helpful because obviously we can't have kids signing in and signing out um, it'd be lunch lunch would be over right yeah. right 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 so you know finding the right fit of the climate and the culture of the school and the community with just making sure that we are you know that we are providing um, reasonable appropriate security Mr. Hopcroft. So Ms. Bergstrom's points, um, I, I think, are, are wonderful, and, and it triggered a couple additional thoughts. Um, one was back to um, uh, Mr. Levine's presentation on the, um, you know, the youth risk survey, behavior uh, risk survey, that you know, risk threats often come from within, and so one is um, the investments we make in social, emotional, and behavioral health, and, and, and looking at um, and identifying, so it's a non-technology solution. Yep. It's, a, it's a teachers having eyes and knowing their kids and knowing when things change. Um, and also, you know, to the other um, end of, of people in the buildings, you know, are the people you know, who need to be core aid, core aid, and, and, and so on and so forth. So um, I think it's, those are great. They just triggered those, those thoughts that there, there's a whole human side to this. That's a really good point, so thank you. There's, this, there's also a whole human side to this on 
the end of the child, right? When children will make mistakes, they will say things they shouldn't say, they will post things they shouldn't post, they, they don't understand necessarily the 24-7 news world that we're living in and we're all, some of us, are super hypersensitive to and just receiving you know, information all the time about this tragedy or that tragedy or this event or that event. You know, that's not the world of a kid. And, and um, you know, we need to keep in mind that we're not looking to ruin anyone's life when they're in, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth grade for saying, making a comment, doing something they shouldn't have done, just not thinking because developmentally, that's, that's what kids do, that's what it is. And we all know it. So allowing room for that and then to that point of just our teachers do know our kids and our in our staff do know our kids and we just need to make sure we always keep that kind of thing in perspective yeah in it's fact I, I would say that it's important that, that those lessons are learned when they're kids and they're, absolutely. And they're small issues so that right. they don't become bigger issues later absolutely in life. Yeah. absolutely so you kind of wore me out i mean that was more than i thought um i just put that on today <laughs> i thought now i'm just gonna put this on because we're talking about it so all right uh, thank you. Um, three, uh, D, Comprehensive Student Performance Data System. Uh, talked a little bit about this at the last meeting. The, the goal is to, there's, we have a lot of good assessments going on. We have a lot of good instruction going on. We have a lot of data that's getting collected and getting used very well um, for you know, formative assessments um, that's informing how teachers work with students. Uh, identification or, or um, screening tools like Dibbles is now uh, really in its first full year, um, which, is, which is a good addition to already a, a pretty extensive portfolio of literacy assessments in the district. Um, talking about math assessments, so what we really want to do, what the, what the goal is, is to be able to bring our project, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, our um, performance-based assessment data somehow have that talk a similar language to uh, other assessments that we do so that we can in that language being having the standards in common so that when we're talking about a, this, our standards which that's our focus then we can pull two or three or however number of data points from different assessments bring that into a funnel that can then communicate to performance on a standard so how you get there can be can be tricky um, and just trying to figure out can we bring these um, different data points into a common performance kind of scale or metric that makes sense that is valid and reliable that can help provide additional information about how students are doing against any given standard this is the for me this is the um, this has, I've been chasing this dream for a long time, so you're gonna you're gonna live through it just like everyone else lived through it, whether I get there or not. But I just think that getting information and data to in the hands of teachers and leaders, uh, educators, and in, in in a way that is that they can act on quickly, that is useful, that takes away some of the laboriousness of what they have to do to collect data. Um, you know, is, is, is a worthy goal. And I think that um, we have the talent here to do it. Um, so again, this is building a framework. Um, you know, we're, we're not, you know, we aren't gonna get there likely by the end of this year, but I think we do have a lot of the tools. I think we have a lot of the talent. Our, um, you know, our, our partnership with MC, MC yeah, sorry, I, this acronym doesn't make sense to me um, <laughs> and what they're doing for their uh, data collection and dash I mean I I just think there's a lot of good synergy right now that we can take advantage of um, and you know I, I, I do believe that we have um, we can come out of this year with a really good plan or even maybe steps toward uh, developing that kind of a um, data system so I am excited about that and um, maybe we'll be depressed in a couple of weeks or months or so. And are you thinking we'll be able to do that K-12? Are you focusing on the, one The level? goal would be K-12, but it would be like every other rollout thing is, you know, they're gonna be in, you know, they're just gonna be places that it makes sense to start for yep. whatever reason, whether it's the right teachers who are, have that same interest or whether it's the, the right assessments that come together in a way that we can make sense out of. 
I mean, a lot of the work is not technology based as much as, as it is really trying to figure out, you know, what is that common metric right. and tying it back. So, and then finally, goal four, which I built out quite a bit. <coughs> um, and I, you can see a couple of red, red um, additions here, just so you can see that the, it did change the wording on the goal itself a little bit. Um, to establish framework for continuous, continuous improvement through thoughtful plan, engagement, and data and evidence-based programmatic review, development, implementation, and evaluation, which is a mouthful, but it is, um, in, I believe, in that order that um, we need to um, make sure that when we embark on making a change or uh, reviewing a program that we want to put in place that we have answers to those points, that we do know why we're doing it, um, that we do know um, what the best way to develop it is, and we have a sense for, you know, we've done some work around best practices, and I think this system has done that. I mean, I think a great example of that is the work that's going on uh, around grading for equity and, and standards-based grading in the district. Um, you know, you've got a team of dedicated teachers and ed educators who are very clear about what they want to do. <laughs> they have really kind of played around with it some. They are piloting it. They do have a grant uh, through WIFI um, that I think, is, I think it's really exciting stuff. And I, I, I don't know many other school systems that are, are, are having this discussion in the same thoughtful way that uh, we are in Winchester. And I'm, I'm uh, glad that I'm along for the ride because it certainly has nothing to do with me. But I, my goal in all this is to support that kind of work because to me that is innovative in how we measure performance of kids um, and we've talked about kind of the, you know, the zone of improvement. I mean, you know, we, the MCAS is a, is a high stakes test or has been always perceived by many as high stakes test. It's helpful in some ways for programmatic review. It's not terribly helpful for the teacher who is receiving the kids from the test that they took last year, right? So it isn't kind of in the moment, real time data that's good for helping teachers and educators work on instructional change or responsive to the students who are in front of them in, in helping them differentiate instruction. So, um, you know, that to me is, this is really the more urgent work uh, that, I, that I see in front of me. Um, set aside the fact that we've, you know, we have a lunch project that we need to write the educational plan for. We have collective bargaining with all of our units. I mean, I've not included any of that in here. And I would just take you back to the rubric for those things, um, you know, because that's the job. Um, this is, to me, the, well, that's the, the job. This is the work. Um, and uh, so my goal is really built around more of not the kind of things that are just going to be part of the, the school year or any year, given year for a superintendent or a school system. So um, I just going to skip down to the some of the action steps that we've built out um, the first one being that I just think it's really important for us to consistently communicate and support the message to the school community that standards aligned culturally responsive instruction is essential to ensure equity that's from actually from the Department of Education rubric I, I don't I think it's a guiding principle uh, in that rubric but I love that language I think that that can that is the foundation for everything else that we do instructionally um, is just an important foundation uh, because it does bring the conversations back to um, mm -hmm. the standards um, to making sure that we are responsive to diversity uh, and the needs of kids uh, and that we are thinking about equity all the time. Um, the one of the action steps that is in pro will be in progress is the language based program review. Um, that to me is um, as a is a is an important piece of work for us. Um, you know that is specifically dealing with our students who are in the language based program and how we deliver that programming, which is we welcome. This is our review. We've asked for this review, um, and you know because we've asked for this review, uh, you know we are we want to be we want to get better. Um, so that process, um, I just want to make sure that it, it, you know, the, the specs look great. I know this is a, a, um, a, a great group to work with, uh, the Integrated Center for Child Development. We just want to make sure that it's inclusive, that um, we, we are including the voices of, of parents, that uh, teachers, of staff, of specialists, uh, so that we can better understand how we support students who are, who are in that program 
Uh, and then stepping back from that, um, kind of related to number three, along with the other assessments we already do in literacy um, and how those assessments come together for decisions about students and, and the kind of instruction that they need and the program they need, which is already there, how do we back up um, and make sure that we are addressing the, the absolute need to identify students who have uh, tendencies or um, indications of, of dyslexia as early as we can, right? So this is kind of like, um, from my perspective, we've got to get really good at this because it's high stakes for our kids, it's high stakes for our, for, for our parents that we are able to identify and be precise about that identification um, as best as we are absolutely able to do so that we then can change instruction, whether it's instruction within the classroom, whether it's instruction within the, uh, a tier, whether it's instruction within a language-based program or um, however that plays out, um, but that without that, we can't make those decisions. And we're not, we have to put that information in the hands of teachers. And I, I also don't want to, and I want to make sure, one big piece of assessment around all of this is, is the professional judgment of our teachers, right? I mean, they are with students. The observation um, that the, and the opportunities they have to work with students and be able to really do that formative assessment component throughout the course of the day is probably the most critical piece of information that we would have. Um, so. Um, again, I think two um, is pressing. I, I think I, I, I hope that we that we can make good gains, and I, I think the, the language-based program review is a good part of that. Um, it's one piece of that for us, but um, it is it will give us a good outside perspective from people who have seen other programs and who are uh, specialists uh, in the field. Um, Support implementation of Dibbles and its integration into the existing WPS literacy assessment portfolio. Support the continued de development of grading for equity, standards-based grading, currently funded, uh, grant funded by, uh, by WIFI. I think that's a tremendously exciting um, initiative. I really am looking forward to, to that, seeing that work develop. Uh, expand the data gathering through the YRBS to include other measures of student well-being and develop short and long-term strategies for supporting students that complement the existing programs that we have. And we do have some great programming around SEL, um, but I also think that that can also kick into the kind of the whole idea of programmatic review. Um, you know, are we, are, are we getting what we thought we were gonna get from some of these programs? Are, are there other things out there that we should be looking at? But really trying to also bring other data into this conversation outside of just the YRBS. And we already have some of those data. Um, SBIRT is happening at the high school, for example. It's a suicide uh, screening uh, mechanism um, that I think, is a, I think is a tremendous tool because it, it's really a time where a, an adult asks kids questions about how they are, where they are in their head, um, which they may never get asked anywhere else ever again. So there are a lot of good pieces of information that I think we can bring together to continue to round out that, pro, you know, that profile that, um, of, of our students and how do we provide more precise, direct services um, that may not just be a general program across the board. Um, and then finally, evaluate our partnership with MCIEA and the <laughs> development of performance-based assessments and develop recommendations that provide WPS with high value. I, I, you know, I think that the work that's been done is tremendous. I think that the work that Winchester has gotten out of the partnership is very much a function of Jen and staff here that have participated yourself as a school committee. You know, you, you, get, you get back what you put into it. And um, I think others has been great because I, I think other school systems have definitely benefited from Winchester being at that table. But I also think it's time for us to kind of evaluate, you know, where are we and, and what what do we want and where do we see it going? Um, as much as I think it's important for us to be a good community partner um, to other school systems in, in the larger sense, I also think that, um, I just think there's a lot more we potentially, um, if, if that group can come along um, and kind of differentiate how they approach um, what the work that they're doing that, that we might have more access to. So, so that's it. <laughs> Sorry. Mr. Nixon. A couple of dumb questions, and I forgive me if this has already been discussed here at the table. Uh, the LBLD program review that's being done by ICCD, 
can, how did we find them? How did they find us? How did that connection happen? And when did that connection happen? And where are we sort of in that evaluation? So I don't, I only know that Pam was heavily involved in determine, making a decision about who was going to come in and do the program review. I don't know whether Jen or Lori can fill out a little bit more of the history of that because I think some of this happened prior to my arrival. Yeah, that was really Pam working with um, who does this kind of stuff regularly um, and focusing on groups, I think, and I don't want to misquote, but that give like specific feedback directly on definitely what's working and what are next steps for us. So I know those pieces were kind of her okay. criteria. In so I don't, and I believe I, we're, we I are. I just know what she's told PAC too, which was she was looking for places that did a more um, holistic review so that they would get feedback from parents, they would get feedback from staff, mm -hmm. um, and that um, it would be sort of a complete review of the program. So she was looking for organizations that both had um, the expertise to be able to do that, that had done this kind of work before, so they were highly valued sort of um, within the educational community on this topic, and um, that um, could really do a, a, a whole 360 mm -hmm. review that mm -hmm. way. And I believe she started this process, um, she's been talking with PAC about it for over a year. So I, if we discussed at the table who was doing it, I, it went you know in one year and out the other. I, I'm excited that they're doing this. That This is a group I don't know a whole lot about, but what I've known about them is I, I've always understood them as a group that sort of works directly with students and families. Yep. My understanding is their consultative division is kind of a newer thing for them, and they do market themselves. They provide services for private schools and you know parochial schools. I didn't think that they were working with larger districts, but um, it's exciting that they're doing that because if the majority of their staff have that experience working one-on-one -on -one with students, they maybe kind of bring that frame of reference to all of the work that they're doing. Um, so then that just leads me to the next question. Forgive me if you said this. Is there is there like a timeline associated with ICCD? We're on the cusp work? of it beginning, I believe. I want to say it's going to be starting in January, um, but I don't know. I mean, do we think, do you know if this is something that their piece might be wrapped up by the end of the school year? Uh, be before the end of the school year. Before the end yes. of the school year. Yeah. You may have said that, I'm sorry. No, I didn't say that, but I do know that. Okay. That's very exciting. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, Mr. Hopcroft. I'll, I'll echo that, um, you know, I think these goals are actually really exciting. Um, and and it's, what's exciting is both what you propose and, and what it, you know, reveals, you know, that, that you know, going through this process, you know, we can see how much work has been put into these, you know, that this has been a, a year in the making to do uh, uh, this assessment and to select the right, you know, um, you know organization to do that, uh, or the review of the language-based program, you know, the, the implementation of some of these um, assessments, whether it be Dibbles or the, the innovative assessments or, or the, the youth behavior study, you know, there's so much work being done in the district. And, and I, I love the fact that throughout your goals, you know, you're looking at, you know, the continuous improvement, which is clearly a tradition that we've had in the district, um, but also bringing a lot of transparency to it. Um, and, and, I, and I love the, the, the showing progress towards goals and, and really, you know, s making it everything from, from where we store the information and centralizing and simplifying and making that available to showing that, you know, there is movement happening. These weren't things that we, you know, created in the 1950s and they've just been sitting here on the website ever since. But you know, look at what's happened in the last six months, in the last, you know, year, in the last, you know, whatever, and look at where we're going. You know, so I, I, I find that all of this, um, you know, really, you know, I, I think it's, it, it really showcases why we're such a great district to begin with and why we'll continue to be a, a great district because of the, you know, these investments. And um, so I'm really excited by this. I think it's great. Thank you. Thank you. I don't mean to be your cheerleader today. But no, I, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it is, yeah. you know I, I am as well. And that's not always how I feel about goals. And I, I think the difference for me this year, and just maybe because I've been doing this for a long time, and I really thought about my own process around this stuff and had an opportunity to kind of think new and fresh about it and just thought, I just don't want this to be a checklist of items. I, I want this to be, you know, a little bit more bigger kind of things that funnel down to a little bit more specific things about the bigger things, but then allow the flexibility to be able to, you know, be, you know, be able to respond and be adaptive through, through the process. So I look at these last few items and I note Dr. Hackett that um, as uh, um, 
that it looks like future agenda items for us on the committee this year too that um, these all look like um, items that as a committee we can um, expect to be hearing from you and the appropriate individuals that are doing this work it would be great to hear from them and actually see that work it's so powerful when um, Jen's able to bring in the educators who are doing some of this work and we can hear from them and that makes it um, really come alive for this committee because we can um, especially when we're not able to get into the schools ourselves even as parents the way we used to be able to right. do from year to year and tour the schools as a committee and see what is going on right. so um, I look forward to hearing about all six of these in the next and, six months. And, and just respectfully um, Madam Vice Chair, I would suggest that there's work in here for the school committee to do as well. I so, would completely uh, the agree. There's a lot of policy <laughs> potential in here. Um, there's some financial stuff in here. So um, I look forward to, you know, working with you in, in, in many aspects of, of what we have, have laid out here. Mr. Brady. I just wanted to appreciate how you've refined these goals. And in particular, I, I really appreciate your emphasis there on dibbles. You know, I know that that's been something that's been talked about a lot in the community. And I, I think it, it is important. And I think you putting it here very clearly within your goals just helps emphasize how important it is to you, to the school committee, to the school system. So thank you for doing sure, that. Sure, sure. And, and just only also to add to that, that the decision to implement Dibbles was made prior to me. Um, it was uh, it was actually piloted or fairly, you know was first year was kind of last year but obviously last year was a very different year um, given the situation with remote learning and all that but um, it, so I you know I'm excited because I feel I'm in a place where there's so much good stuff already going on that I my goal my I think my job is to hopefully just make it better um, and refine it and be more clear and um, you know kind of keep some of the noise out around other things because we could be doing everything or try to do everything and you, you know as you know you keep, well. exactly <laughs> right 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 can I make one request to Dr. Hackett could you get a could you link this to our binder when you have a moment absolutely to do so? yep absolutely we'll see that in Google Docs thanks thank you for all the work that it took to get to this point by this point in your time with us as well because it also reflects just how many conversations you've been having with mm -hmm. community members as well as staff and administrators and understanding because pulling out what's important when you're new is sometimes it's nice to be the the new person in the room and be able to have that perspective but also listening to what's important to the work that's come before so I appreciate that. well thank you for your patience and your feedback and allowing me the, the chance to do a uh, spend time on it so I was also going to say that I really appreciated this process of how you've been developing your goals um, and you've taken a lot of it's been since you've gotten here and I'd say you even laying some of the groundwork perhaps a little bit before. <laughs> um, but I've really appreciated this process and um, how you have de really delved into your goals and you've spent so much time with us, with community, with the administration and your team. Um, just peeling and uh, peeling back the layers and really seeing um, how all of these items and all of your goals fit together. Um, it's very easy to see how, you, how the action steps tie in with the overall goals. Um, and it, your goals are really very much like a story, a story of our district. Um, I like seeing the dashboard um, and how we, how community members and how we could see, can have our eyes on what's happening, what to expect next. I think that would, I think that is a great way of communicating with all of us and with the community. Um, I also just like seeing the continuity. I feel like there's continuity that's being laid here for, I think it'll be helpful for teachers um, from one year to the next um, with their students and um, just being able, I, I, think, I think, I know it's a lot of work for teachers from one grade level to the next as the students progress. And I feel like this helps set up that bit of continuity um, for the teachers. It just makes it a little more efficient <laughs> and easy for um, for teachers and our students to have um, meaningful meetings and getting ready for different for ensuing years, um, 
And like Ms. Bergstrom was saying, I was sitting here writing and thinking, oh, there are so many items here that could come up on future agenda meetings <laughs> or on our future agenda items. And I too am looking forward uh, to seeing how, see, hearing the updates over the course of the year. So thank you, thank you very much. And I, and I do think over the next few weeks, um, I'll be more be able to be a little bit more clear about timelines around this stuff, so it doesn't feel like this is all starting right now and this is all going to end at the same time. Right. That you know, putting some pace behind this, um, but I just need, I need a little bit more time. One more piece of sort of congratulatory um, commentary, but you know, I feel like I've known you forever, and, and the <laughs> amount of stuff that you've covered, and I don't know when the ramp up period like started or ended, but you've been on the job what five months. So I 101 some, days uh, I mean, as of it, it, the first it, line. One of these. Again, it, it, it's updates. just a, the volume of stuff. And you know, the, the, obviously a lot of things are, are in motion before and, and we're, mm -hmm. we're really you know, great. But, um, but my gosh, the number of people you've met, the number of, mm -hmm. time, the number of hours we've spent together, um, <laughs> it, it does feel like I've known you for at least I, yeah, two or I three years. I feel the same. It, so, feels, uh, and it feels very good and comfortable but yeah. and, the same, and the same and tiring at times. But it's, it's been... <laughs> Yeah, I feel the same. I, I think you're like ramped up. You I just feel like I've been here a long time. In, in yeah. business, it's often like you, know, you assume the first six months to a year is just a ramp up period. Right. Uh, I don't know <laughs> when you, when that happened for you, but uh, uh, yeah, you're hitting your stride. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. And with that, we will move into our action items. It is almost eight o'clock. And our first action item is consideration of approval of the superintendent's goals. I'm happy to make a motion. Okay, thank you very much. Second. Thank you, Mr. Brady. All in favor? Aye. 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 And thank you. That was a unanimous vote. Um, next, we will have consideration of approval of updates to the Title IX policy. Um, and these had been whoops, previously provided in September. Um, and we had voted on an initial series of recommendations back in September um, from our council on sexual harassment. So we are circling back to capture these items as well. These are um, JBA and ACA1. And I would just simply note that um, the, well, perhaps Dr. Hackett would like to <laughs> expand on this a little bit more, but my understanding is that J within JBA and ACA1, we are just simply making note that any references to sexual harassment should actually be treated under the policy that we approved in September, which was ACAB. Right. Well said. That's exactly right. Uh, I'm happy to make motions, but I'm going to make three keep it clean. I move that the school committee adopt revisions to policy ACA-1 last approved April of 2019 exactly. as presented. All in favor? Aye. 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 I move the school committee adopt revisions to policy JBA last adopted by the school committee in June of 2015. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then to clarify, as I read the memo from council, I move to discontinue the use of policy AC-R, last approved or adopted in June of 2015. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well done. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. We got them all. That is right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, next, we have consideration of acceptance of some picnic tables from Atavala, which are six six-foot tables. Move to approve the donation of the tables. Second. Thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. 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 And thank you very much for the Chair, donation. Do, do we yes. know where those tables are going to go? Right outside here. Okay. They're out there now. <clears throat> oh, yes, where they've been delivered. Was. I, mean, I was uh, fo focused on the truck with all the lights on. <laughs> yeah. I think it might have. <laughs> it was dark. The preschool is excited to make yeah. use of them. They, they, yeah, they, they are. Yeah, they uh, are. Uh, next, we have consideration of appointment to the Finance Committee. We are going into our budget season, and we will have a two-member subcommittee of the school committee to work with our administration and the town on our budget. So I would accept any nominations or volunteers 
for this position. Uh, I'd like to nominate Mr. Brady to the Finance Subcommittee. I'd like to nominate Mr. Brady. Oh. Thank you. Is there a second? You trying to read your body language. You want to do this, right? I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's a man of His shoulders slumped for a minute. <laughs> Thank you. It's exciting and exhausting at the same time. <laughs> so we, we, but the goal is to have two members, right? Yes, the goal is to have two members. That is correct. Um, Does it make sense for one of those members to be in leadership or have experience with this? I'm sorry, uh, I couldn't hear. <laughs> uh, does it make sense for, for one of those members to be someone who's in committee leadership or who has been in committee leadership before? Generally, my experience has been yes. the chair or the vice chair have served on a finance subcommittee, but and if you want to flip Mr. a coin. Mr. Brady had expressed interest last time, so. That's correct. So we would be preferably, I suppose, looking for one more experienced <laughs> member. Did you want to draw straws or? <laughs> uh, I mean, We're all, all looking all at each other. Either. Does yeah. one of you want to do it? Either one of us, are, I'm happy to do it. I am ha I'm happy to do it, or the vice chair is happy to do it as well, so. You, Mr. Nixon. <laughs> I'll, My I'll hands nominate, are full. I'll nominate Michelle. Second. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. 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 That was for both, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that is correct. Okay. Um, so we have a unanimous vote for nominating uh, and or for, for um for having Mr. Brady and Ms. Bergstrom represent us as our finance subcommittee going into the budget season. So thank you very much. Um, next, we have consideration of approval of the FY23 budget development process. And so, oops, sorry. Um, we have a very- You had a calendar um, presented to you last time. There, there was one minor adjustment only in that uh, there were, there was a, after after you approve the budget for submission to the to the town, which is in January into February, that process is really over, right? I mean, you've approved the budget. That's the mm -hmm. budget that you presented. That's the budget that's going to presumably um, go through the process. So um, there were a few other steps afterward that I just don't think are necessary because at that point you've approved it as a committee um, and you know, any changes that would happen aren't bottom line changes. It would be changes due to enrollment that was unexpected or, uh, you know, but programmatically we wouldn't likely be coming to you and saying we want to implement X, Y, and Z. Um, although I will say this year, I hope that we should talk about trying to provide some flexibility with some of that based on just the timing of the goals and timing of everything. But, um, you know, you will have already voted the budget, I guess is my point. So additional meetings, um, for the for the school committee or the finance subcommittee would just be part of the town's overall process, um, not really yours. Uh, that's that's a question. I'll put a question mark on the end of that. Well, so in other words, if I'm hearing you right, so there, there's a purpose for our finance subcommittee. subcommittee. The shared purpose with the education subcommittee of finance gets us to a threshold. We vote a budget. It's now collectively, it's the school committee budget goes to the town manager, goes to FinCom, they then have a process there. They, you know, will discuss our budget. They may have questions. And in years past, those are public meetings. And so sometimes a few, sometimes all of the school committee shows up at those meetings to answer questions as they come up. Um, and while I suppose it's possible some big event could happen and it changes our number, um, that certainly would that would be a wrench in the machine for all the other town departments, just recognizing the town managers putting together a balanced budget, right? So we're, we're the 600-pound gorilla given our spending. So it's kind of a big deal if we come in and say, we're oops, you know, we, we voted this, but we're actually going to vote this. Um, so I, I appreciate what you're saying. And then I would just say my experience with, with the finance subcommittee uh, of the school committee has been really um, to have you that the, the two of you, congratulations, um, work with Peter, and myself, administrators, you know, you, you tell us what you want, we'll give you, you know, we will present to you what we think um, and, you know, have that open discussion um, around 
kind of priorities and uh, have a chance to kind of vet through. Um, you know, I also think it's important that we report back to, and it's a very short timeline, but back to the school committee um, because you all need to know what's going on with the budget. So, um, so we'll just maybe at the first meeting, which will need to happen pretty soon, um, we can kind of talk about that timeline and that those chunks of work. Um, you know, one of the biggest pieces that, from my perspective, is this, the rollover of staff. <coughs> uh, uh, and Peter has already really done that. He's done a great job really nailing down who we have, where they are, and then just rolling them forward, assuming just, you know, just the steps. Um, you know, we'll make some assumption, assumptions around columns. Then, then, as you know, we are in a contract negotiation year, so then we'll have to make some assumptions around uh, or scenarios around what the impact of, of that might be. Uh, but that's 85% of what we do. So hopefully we can get quickly to the discussion about priorities because I think that's the most important discussion. Peter, I don't know if I've left anything out or. No, I think you're absolutely right on. Um, you know, I think the sooner we can sit and talk, um, you know, the better it will be because uh, <laughs> it's moving fast. <laughs> well, and I just also remind the committee that any of our subcommittees serve at the pleasure of the committee. So if there are things that you want to send to the finance committee to make sure that we're checking on, you know, please bring them to us in these meetings so that we know what your concerns are as well. Um, so that we're making sure that by the time a budget comes to this committee that it's something that everybody is knowledgeable about and prepared for. So Dr. Hackett, you're su you, just be before I make a motion, you were suggesting that the line that said school after the school committee vote and after the, you submit the budget and your report to the town manager and FinCom, you were suggesting take out school and finance committees, education yes, subcommittee, right? Because right, 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 the right, subcommittee's right, work is sort of done. done. Right. And then the following that, school committee meets with the finance committee in March, which we do, and then school budget vote at an annual town meeting. So I'm happy to make a motion to approve as described. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. And then we have finally uh, the consideration of approval of minutes from October 12th, 26th, 26th, and November 9th. I thought they were outstanding. Motion to approve. Second. Aye. 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 Yes. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. Um, chair report. See, I just had a. I just wanted to give a reminder to our members of the audience that if you have not done so already, please do go and sign up for Parent Square so that you can receive communications from the district. Um, you should have received an email on November 30th uh, about this, or please check with your um, PA newsletter or with your building principals for contact information. And also, I would just suggest please check out the features that it offers. And I think it will, we think it will, that, or we change think your you life. will It'll appreciate change your life. all of its capabilities um, and possibilities. So, Dr. Hackett, superintendent report. I, no, I do not have anything further. I've spoken enough tonight. Thank you. Can I just put Dr. Hackett on the spot? Can you just describe some of the cool activity that's been going on at Lynch this week on the site? <laughs> it's good to talk about. Well, it is, but progress. I mean, I, it, we are big progress. So um, we've ha I sh great. Mm -hmm. actually, no, I was going to actually, I should have mentioned this. So we have to uh, put together a group, um, uh, working group with uh, parents and staff on it, uh, administrators on it. Jen has been, Jen's a part of it. Um, Lori's a part of it. Um, and we have had, uh, we had a great session just really st kind of starting the visioning process of, of what we hope and dream that the Lynch School will be. Um, we have two more sessions and I, is, is one tomorrow or Thursday? Thursday. Thursday. Okay. All right. Um, we have another one Thursday and, and one the following week, which will be the final session. Uh, that will help us can put together the education plan, which is part of the submission to the MSBA, which is a, 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 is, is a heavy lift um, for us. But we have great people, and a lot of what we talked about here, I think, can really help feed into that as well, uh, including the, um, the sessions with, with the working group. But I, I thought it went really well. I thought there were really good discussions. People are excited. It starts to feel real when you start to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, and we will bring back to you 
um, kind of a, a summary of, of those conversations. Uh, maybe uh, maybe at, maybe at your next meeting It'll probably be the best time to do it, given the fact that you're we're running out of December. So, who are some of the participants in the hopes and dreams? I mean, just broadly. Maybe, yeah, no, maybe at the broadly. Te meeting. yeah, teachers, uh, teachers yeah. and parents mainly, uh, and administrators parents. as well. Yeah. Was your question about machines drilling holes? What's that? Was your question about machinery dr drilling holes and stuff? Or I was oh, going to let you take that. I, I always <laughs> like just saying, talk about the exciting stuff that's going on, because then you, you learn about you know where people sort of lean one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that is exciting stuff. The the stuff that the kids see or the heavy equipment and yeah. So we had an excavator on site yesterday so we did some excavation pits looking at soil characteristics we have a drilling rig on site all day today all day tomorrow they're going down 25 feet um, expecting to hit rock and if they don't they keep going um, they they're taking samples and sending it off to the lab so we have our geotech engineer on site um, and that they, they may come back um, this is just some preliminary soil characteristics to begin to think about what you know what that tells us in terms of like foundation design some areas we can rule in or rule out and then i think survey yet to come so there will be a surveyor i think we've, we've, we've already done some traffic studies right 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 or traffic counts yeah, i should say counts. um but this but this segues well in terms of future agenda items um madam chair because um the efpbc is going to be meeting on the 20th hmm. um and part of that meeting will include a uh, presentation on the ED program that Dr. Hackett, Dr. Ellen M, and everybody are working on, including the functional space program. Practice of the school committee has long been to approve, though I can't remember if we've actually voted or we just do it through consensus, but we sign off on, if you will, the, um, the space program. Mm -hmm. Some of you will recall, maybe all of you will recall if you were watching at the time, but in August of 20, we reviewed a program that we submitted to the MSBA in a previous module that spoke to, for instance, how many sections of K through five and so forth. So how, how many classrooms, which of course drives the size of the building. Um, so that's a, a portion of the work that's going on right now. And we would like to be able to bring that to the school committee before the EFPBC meeting on the 20th. Uh, we do have a meeting uh, scheduled on the 14th. So that's one option. <laughs> What's that? I have that. That was one option, but yes. there is another. So maybe we could talk about that under next meeting dates um, if we need to. But in terms of future agenda items, we do want to get the uh, space, Lynch Space Program on there. Could, could I also just jump back to the to what's happening on site at Lynch for, for a moment? And, and, and first acknowledge Please. that the excavators are yellow uh, and the drilling thing is blue. Um, just about my knowledge of that but i was just curious when you said it is um because i've been watching as it, each day i drop off um and so when you said that based on the dates i could determine which is which um this this 25 plus foot hole i think it is like sealed or small or something i i, ha I haven't gotten close enough to these things to to see how they're how they're protected but i take it they're capped or fenced it's just or a something. boring isn't it chris Oh yeah, they, 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 boring or a little boring? They, they're they're very small. Yeah. In oh, fact, okay. if you go onto my Twitter page, I sent out a little video this afternoon of them working on site today. Okay. So what they take out actually fits into a little glass container. It's actually it's not even this big okay. around. It's very small. You got me nervous when you talked about a 25 foot deep you, hole. You can't fall in it. <laughs> no. no, you can't fall in it. It's no. like Perfect. it's fr frankly it like collapses on itself. I think when they take their equipment out. So no, very okay. very literally this can wouldn't fit down this thing. Right. Uh, but right. thank you for asking about that. Right. Um, and so far, I mean, when I was talking to them earlier today, they're, you know, they, they, do, they, they do a little bit of homework on the site um, before they show up, um, look at some existing documentations, they read up on the site history, and so far as I understand, no big surprises yet. Great. That's perfect. Yeah. I just retweeted, so. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's now the official, the official Winchester Public Schools. So future agenda okay. items? Yes. I know, I, I, we're doing all the tweets, so. So. Um, next on our agenda, the future agenda items, of which we have already touched on a few, perhaps. Um, budget planning, building facility update, enrollment. We, as uh, Ms. Bergstrom said, we had a science curriculum um, sub or science curriculum discussion at our subcommittee, so the next step will be to bring that in um, for the whole school committee to hear. Good stuff. Space program for Lynch. Mr. Hopcroft. 
when, oh. when you were done. Oh, uh, <laughs> I saw a motion. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I just wanted to, to see if we could add. We talked in the past about having um, Jen Murphy or Jen Markham um, come back and give us periodic updates on, on COVID and with a new variant out there. Um, I know there, there are lots of people who want to see us at the other end of this thing and just, just staying you know, up to date on where we are um, would be great if we could at some future meeting with some cadence. I'd like to second that. At our last school committee meeting, the state had just broken through 3% positivity. And an hour ago, we broke through, I think, 4.5. Uh -huh. so things do change. Yeah. In terms of next meeting dates, can we talk about, can we take a straw poll of interest and availability for a single um, subject meeting on Thursday, December 16th, which would be the Lynch program? And it doesn't have, doesn't have to work out that way, but we have some members of the consultant team that are available on the 16th that are not available on the 14th. We can still, we can roll it into the agenda on the 14th. I don't think that'll be a problem, but if the committee for it maybe has questions about not just the Lynch program, but what's happening in other schools, other districts, you know, those would be the people to answer. So it, it sort of speaks to what the interest is of the committee in terms of who you would like to have present it. What time of day? We were assuming in the evening. I know our architects are available in the evening if we wanted to do like literally a 6 to 7 p.m. You know, we, we, we can do a special event meeting um, mm -hmm. outside of a usual Tuesday meeting if we wanted to. And uh, just to clarify, um, so the architect is the, there's some conflict with there's some conflict with our participants for the 14th that's right so that's why we are looking at the 16th right. that's right i would suggest if people are available we move the whole meeting till the it's a hard time of year and for everyone and that if we can just move the whole meeting to the 16th and if it is going to be a bit longer maybe start an hour earlier with the lynch and then move into our general agenda but um i would suggest we move the whole thing if we're gonna i'll, I'll say i'm i'm very interested um i'm available on that date um and i'm conflicted about whether to move it all because i hear your point about t i'd rather not take up two nights um, i don't but, think i can do two. But, but at the same time um you know maybe if they're put together maybe there can, there can be two events that are back to back, but separate. Um, just just because I, I worry about it getting squeezed in with our agenda. And it, so, just to be clear, uh, um, I think Do Dr. Hackett and I feel like it can be included in the presentation on the 14th in terms of presenting it, what it is, and why. If the committee has questions that are sort of outside just this particular process for Lynch, those would not be questions that we could really answer. If you don't feel if you if you'd be more comfortable having the architects on board, they're not available on the 14th. Though we did not ask, and I'm sure they would welcome the opportunity to do it remotely. So that's another option: is perhaps a remote meeting on the 16th. Um, if we had a single subject meeting, you know, given that we have public comment at our regular Tuesday meetings, don't know that we would have to do public comment at a special session on a Thursday. We could literally just devote it to the program. So it just depends on what the committee is really interested in. I mean, I'm. I'm more than happy to have it as part of the 14th and part of your report. I, I have to say I, you know, speak for myself, but I, I generally feel that you, Chris, are able to give us 99% of the information we need. And of course, we may have other I questions. Do the, I do the but, other 1% for you. But I, I don't, I don't <laughs> think we necessarily have to have the architects available. Okay. I mean, certainly if they want to join, you know, remotely or, or however, but I I think just based on what we've heard and the updates you've been able to give us, um, I'm, I'm very comfortable just having you and, and Dr. Hackett present us the information. Okay. And Jen's a part of that process too, Yeah. right? Yeah. So you, she'll, she'll be with us. Um, Mr. Nixon, would the architects be remotely uh, available? Remotely? No, they're not. Okay, they're not at all. Literally okay. like traveling. So, but, but that's okay. I think I, we can handle it. Um, okay. We would just want to get the, uh, get the program out to the school committee in advance, you know, Thursday or Friday before the meeting as part of the packet on Google Docs. Yeah, that would yep. be great. Absolutely. Okay. And so then we are maybe if we have the packet ahead of time, if there's questions we have for the architects, maybe we could get questions to them ahead of time as well. I am, 
I, I, I'm looking for a reaction from the superintendent. I am doubtful that the program would be complete much before the end of day Thursday. So if the school committee is like reviewing that maybe Friday afternoon or over the weekend, maybe questions go to the architect on Monday. Yeah. Maybe we could pull that off. Yeah, maybe. Can, can you just <laughs> can you just reiterate um, what we lose by not doing the dedicated one on Thursday or or whenever? I just wasn't just physically player. having the architects present if there are questions about sort of what peer projects are, are doing. So so this came up at the, the kickoff meeting we had on the 16th. We had some great questions about the Lynch project specifically. There were some good community questions about, like to our architects, what are you seeing generally in educational design, elementary design, and so forth. So that's not a question I'm going to answer that Dr. Hackett can answer. It's a fantastic team. It's a very talented architect. They're doing a great job. I mean, I imagine if we do it on the 14th, It'll simply be to say, this is kind of where we are in terms of number of classrooms. Here's how that's changed from the last time we talked about it. Here's why. Here's what, for instance, the pre-K program looks like. Even that pre-K program is a little different than how we've been talking about it up, up until now. I think one member will be pleased at some of the changes in the program. Um, so there, there's some highlights, actually. I mean, it, I think it'll yeah. be a good discussion. Yeah. And, and can I ask a, as a follow-up? Um, if Because I heard the, 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 the difficulty of doing two nights if we moved the entire both meetings till the 16th and I don't know if people have conflicts with that um, does that enable us to have the architects the architects uh, are available on the 16th yes so it'd be the same meeting we'd have on the 14th but with the benefit of the architects yes so so there's so the issue I, is simply what kind of questions do the, does the committee feel that they they may have for you know outside of the Lynch project specifically you want you want to speak to I'm sure you're going to do a great job describing what's in the program on the 14th yeah, I'm not um, yeah I think it's really is more about whether you have questions um, based on their experience at other locations with other projects and similar projects light projects they may be able to fill in a little bit more detail around their process and where they are and that kind of thing but in terms of talking about the program spaces and where we are with the educational planning mm -hmm. um, it, you know we we certainly have be able to deliver that yeah. the program spaces and educational and educational programs seem as if it's more of an internal or not not in well that our admin that our administration and and you can handle and if we're asking for information about comparing to other other um how i can't think of the word uh, other comparable peer projects comparable peer yeah. projects yeah. um then is that something that uh, Tape that uh, Mr. Hayes could provide as a memo if if we are interested or I think I would be, there. I think it's a better conversation so conversation. What, it, maybe it's not it's now January to but 11th too late to I, have that conversation it's never going to be too late to have a conversation around the project the focus mm -hmm. might be a little bit different that's all but I mean that's all on my thinking yeah so we're so since you just mentioned January 11th, mm -hmm. another date to please hold. So January 10th is going to be an EFPBC meeting that will be deliberately kind of advertised as a public. It's another public update mm -hmm. where they will see some early, even architectural concepts from TAP A, like early, early concepts. But that meeting will also include the space program okay. that has been submitted um, to, because we have a PDP deadline right. that's coming up right. um, with the well, Mass School Building That will Authority. be submitted after Will be, the excuse me, Thank will you. be submitted. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's Will okay. be submitted. It's the 18th, right? I think it, that's it the deadline. It is the 18th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so that's right. So we want to we have that public meeting and then get even more sort of public feedback and be able to react to that before the PDP um, submission. So, so, so I have a general bias towards that. I'd, I'd rather, you know, given the scope of this project and the, the you know, financial impact and just everything this is and and you know yes i'm, I'm the, the the lynchy here so mm -hmm. uh, uh i care a lot about it um i don't know that i need all that but if i but if the if it was all the same to people and tuesday versus thursday didn't matter i would err on the side of let's have them there um but if so if people have a conflict with that date i could live with with keeping it on the regular date and i understand the concern about doing both dates um so i'm not uh, i've withdrawn that suggestion but uh uh, but if everyone's free on Thursday, just as easily as Tuesday, and it might add richness to the conversation, I would say, why not? So our choice then, just to summarize, is we could keep our regularly scheduled meeting on December 14th, which would be next week, um, with all of us, 
but n no TAPE participation. Or if we would so choose, we could look at December 16th, moving our regularly scheduled meeting to the m December 16th and including the architects. So I guess our question is around availability. And the third option is just stick with the 14th as you have it. And we could do a remote meeting on the 16th with TAPE. I know they would welcome a remote meeting. If you wanted to just have a single subject meeting, we block out an hour. I think that would be enough. So Nor do we need to make a decision right now, but we just wanted to sort of share with a committee the, these are our options. Well, pretty soon, though, because we're going to have to yeah. post for the we, 14th. Yeah. Right. One of the things I'm hearing, though, is that people don't have the availability to take two nights out at this time. Ah. Um, and so I, I wonder if, if we did do a single meeting on whichever date, could we, could we do a, you know, whether it's 5 to 6 or 6 to 7, a dedicated meeting on Lynch, I would, I would propose, on the Thursday um, with TAPE, and then have the school board uh, committee meeting follow that with our regular agenda so that it's still a dedicated meeting and mm -hmm. and it still only takes one night yeah but I we get the benefit suggesting as well of everything mm -hmm. I will just note that there will also be an executive session for the 14th uh. or whichever whichever date we end up choosing before or after uh, you can do it after. After executive would be after. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Agenda on the meeting. Okay. So, Dr. Three Hackett's right. We don't have a lot of time to figure it out, but we have a little bit of time, and um, I didn't want to grind us to a halt. But okay. these are our options. Right. So, <coughs> I'll, I'll do whatever you know mm -hmm. the chair and the superintendent feel is best. Does, does anyone have a problem with the 16th? Does it? Does that not work on anyone's calendar? I can move it to the 16th. Seamus, does that work for you? Yeah, I think I can make it work. I just haven't haven't checked everything. I could make it work. It, it, I want to be clear. The reason that we were bringing this up tonight is this is, you know, the project has been basically handed off to the EFPBC. But the school committee really does have an important role. We, we need to know what are the spaces in this building and why, and, and we have to approve that. Um, much of it comes on the recommendation from the superintendent, but the school committee's practice in Winchester has has been to do just that we did that on the high school did it on VO did it on McCall um, and so it, it really is important that everybody everybody on the school committee understands what are the basic building blocks of this building those those drive the size of the building they drive cost this program's a little bigger than where it was in the master plan as it sits right now and, and so we're looking at that um, you know I I've cert I'm hearing anecdotally some folks in town are saying build it as big as you can but the round number we keep throwing out is every time you add a classroom, if the MSP I would suggest that we, it, Mr. Nixon, with bucks. respect, I would just suggest that we stay on the on the subject of the date. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. just trying to be clear about so, why it's important the yes. committee be, you know, right. informed and on board. So, would you like to follow up with us? So, I I do have the 16th available. So, um, I could do if the 16th. we would like to do the 16th then I believe we can we could just move that date to the 16th. What we could do is circle back with TAPE and just confirm availability. Mr. Hopcroft's suggestion you do the, like do a session with them extra early. Let us maybe work with TAPE. If we at least block out the date right now, we can maybe figure out the logistics. Okay. All right. Particularly with all the other stuff you want to accomplish on the 16th. Yes. Okay. So I will just make note that for we'll move into next meetings. Um, we will either have our next meeting on December 14th or December 16th, um, potent, beginning earlier than 6 p.m. Um, January 11th, we have a 6 p.m. meeting. January 18th, we have a 6 p.m. meeting. And also January 25th and January 31st, we have 6 p.m. meetings. So it is a busy budget season just to confirm the 31st is a Monday meeting yes yes okay. yep. for the budget vote yep. that's specifically yes. for one thing yep. yes you know just thinking out loud not to, not to I'm sorry not to beat the horse when it's already dead I, I just can't <laughs> just replace that one I'm sorry <laughs> um, if we could do the 16th it would be better because we need to get finance subcommittee well, that's, together that's the because other thing I was we're doing a I little bit that. you know we're gonna have to do some preview of budget yep um at that next meeting whether it's the 14th or the 16th so it would buy us a little bit more time hmm. yep to go to the 16th so then well, i would just 
suggest that we just move it move it to the 16th if everybody can make it work okay yeah that works i'm fine with that perfect okay we'll just we'll just circle back with tape on actual yeah. timing so that would be great i wish yep. i so I, my apologies for not saying that about 10 minutes earlier but it just came to me so yeah <laughs> okay um and hold on i just lost my agenda <laughs> Okay, so next we have an executive session. Um, we will need a motion um, to meet an executive session pursuant to Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, for the following purposes. Purpose two, which is a grievance from the Winchester Education Association, Unit A, because an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the committee. And purpose four, to discuss the deployment of security personnel or devices or strategies with respect thereto. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, roll call vote. Aye. 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 And uh, the committee will reconvene in open session only for the purposes of adjournment. Thank you very much. Hey, where are we meeting? Yeah. Uh, right in my office. Dr. Hackett's office.